In this Customer Service Week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are striving, striving to be the best, best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwevare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Shores Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this customer service week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are striving to be the best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwebare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this Customer Service Week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are striving to be the best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwebare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this Customer Service Week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are, are striving, striving to be the best, best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwevare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this Customer Service Week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are striving to be the best just for you. Kwa wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwevare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Omiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this Customer Service Week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are striving to be the best just for you. Kwaate Jawetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwevare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Shores Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this customer service week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valid customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are striving to be the best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwebare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this Customer Service Week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are striving to be the best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwebare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Omiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this customer service week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we'll continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are, are striving, striving to be the best, best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwevare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
from sport and immortality. Corporate is be more conscious of your duty to deliver a men and women of the nation who might not get if and corporate. God loving Father, we thank you for this great day you have given us. We thank you for all the journeys you have accorded the people present here. We pray that you send us your Holy Spirit to guide us in all that we are going to discuss so that we have a good cooperative insurance company to serve the people of this country so that everybody can benefit. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. While the lockdown, we have continued support you and we continue serving you. Thank you so much, Director Josephine. I think she deserves the crowd. You know, when we were singing the anthems, assuming she was keep quiet, I don't know what was going to happen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Director Josephine. Uh, so, members, as we proceed, you will allow me to introduce, first of all, myself and then the team of directors who are seated with us here. Here yeah, for CIC Africa Uganda and I also yeah, work Pastor as the General Secretary of Uganda Cooperative Alliance, which is a shareholder of CIC. Of CIC. Africa, sure Thank you so much. And, uh, what I enjoy most uh, about my current role I would love that he is walking the journey with the customer. MC well, through all the challenges you remove the, the mic because I would want the directors because the shareholders needed to listen to the directors. So we shall use a few minutes life, for a, a director day, to introduce him or herself. So we have a very big team of directors here. Let me begin customers. with the... We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer. And we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and we will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going. We grow together in this partnership and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. Good morning everyone. Eric Nkaja is my name. Uh, board member for CIC Life. Board member Africa. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Dan Badevie, uh, board member for CIC General Insurance. I also chair My the name Finance is and Investment Nigero. Committee on behalf of the CIC of the general business. Branch Network. Thank you. I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for Good choosing us as your preferred insurer. My name is Thank Diana Namkenya Adeemi. I am a member of CIC Africa, and I also chair the Risk Committee. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling Daula Douglas Kachuchu, engineer. I'm a member of uh, the board of CIC, Geno, and I'm also the chair of the Risk Committee of Geno. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm James Joy, the group vice chairman, and also board member in CIC Africa. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is George Inholo. I'm a board member for CIC General Business, and I'm happy to be here and looking forward to the deliberations of the day. Thank you. Dear cooperators, my name is Navi Yongomeri Josephine, a teacher of music. And <laughs> I'm a board member CIC, General Business. You are most welcome. Uh, good morning, dear delegates. My name is Patrick Nyaga. I am a director at CIC Africa Uganda, 
and also the Group Chief Executive Officer. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christine Kawasema. I'm a board member, CIC Africa Life Assurance, and I chair the audit committee of uh, the Africa Life Assurance. Thank you. Uh, good morning, delegates. My name is Francis Ogwang. I'm a board member. I chair the board of uh, the CIC Life Business. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Joseph Areo are my names. I sit in the board of CIC Life, and I chair the Investment and uh, Finance Committee. Thank you. OK. Continue, continue this side. Is there any other person? Any other director? Oh, oh, okay. Fine, fine. It's okay. Yeah, thank you so much. So let's continue. Good morning, fellow cooperators. Is this on? You can hear me? Yeah, good morning, fellow cooperators. My name is Nelson Kuria. I chair the group board in uh, Nairobi, CIC, Kenya. Thank you. It's great to be here. And I look forward to a very engaging and fruitful annual general meeting. Morning, everyone. Glad to see you here today. This is I'm Winnie Kiomhendo from s and Advocates. We in this customer service week that CIC. is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving uh, you. Good morning, cooperators. Good morning, shareholders. Good morning, delegates. Throughout the lockdown, My name is Eric Obila. we have continued to support you of and CIC continue Africa serving you assurance. You are the Limited. heart and soul of our business. And, and we are striving to be the best just for you. With the Thank you so much. So, shareholders, you can see that we have a team of directors here, and it's a mixture. We have the independent directors, and we also have directors representing shareholders, and this is as per the requirement of our regulator, which is the issue. So, thank you so much. So, next item on the agenda, if we are to go back to our program, we shall invite the managing director of CIC Africa Uganda to introduce his team and thereafter My name is Tom make Mitty, a presentation on behalf of management. Of Thank you. Life, Africa Shores Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate Good our morning customers. once again. Uh, We've walked a long <coughs> journey excuse me. together with uh, you as a customer. So I'll start off by introducing my team who, we are, who are here. Because of you, our customer. We cannot and we'll I think never the most take obvious ways to ask, ask them to come to the front quickly because of so that we can at least hear their voices we also. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going. Two minutes, please. Together CIC staff. In this CIC staff. And <coughs> I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. Okay, so I'll let you hear their voices. Name, what you do. Francis Semwanga is my name. I'm happy to see all of you. I, uh, I am with you in the circles, circle relationship. My name person. is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of Good morning. CIC Branch my name Network, is Fiona Tsong, like and the Human Resource Manager. You are all welcome. For choosing us as your preferred insurer. Good morning. Thank you Tom very Omiti much. Tom Omiti is my name. I'm the CEO of the Life Company. Most welcome.
morning, shareholders. Nathan Ainebawas is my name, uh, the Deputy Finance Manager. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lynette Masese, Deputy Manager, Claims and Underwriting. Good morning. I'm Dokas Chembo, Receptionist, CIC General. Good morning. Namte Esther is my name. I'm the Executive Assistant. Yes, good morning, directors, good morning, shareholders, and everyone in attendance. Keith Victor Muganiz is my name, and I'm the legal officer. Glad to be here. <coughs> good morning, everyone. Priscilla Namsoke Chirabo is my name. I'm an IT officer, life insurance. Good morning, everyone. Sharon Nahura is my name. I'm uh, in sales team, life insurance. Thank Good morning, you. Ismail Mukasa, the National Sales Manager and UMC today. Thank you very much. Um, this is just part of the team. Apologies from the CEO, the acting CEO of the general business. Um, she's, in, she's been admitted sick. Uh, the handwriting manager is also away, uh, sorting out some business matters. Uh, in full, in total, we've got a complement of about 46 staff. That number is expected to grow in, in the year 2022. We currently have a complement again of about 200 agents thereabouts who we should be able to meet on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll, I'll move fairly quickly now to do the, the presentation. Just one thing, which is the best place for me to turn from. So I'll, I'll take you through uh, a few slides just to bring you up to speed with what we do as CIC Africa Insurance and for you also to appreciate uh, where you put your money or where you are uh, doing, who you are doing business with. Um, so who are we? First of all, it's key to us is what is our philosophy as a business and this runs through from, from the group level. Um, one is our purpose is basically to help you and everyone else with whom we, we, we treat as a stakeholder <coughs> have what we call financial security. Uh, our vision is basically to be a financial, uh, to lead and, uh, a dependable provider of, of insurance and other financial services in Uganda through the cooperative spirit. So that's why this meeting is being held principally for the shareholders who are cooperators. So at the end of the day, what we are looking at is to be able to help you make money as you also make money for the other bigger Uganda populace. Uh, in terms of, of our values, we expect and we treat ourselves as in such. This to customer be very service transparent. Week that is internationally celebrated. It starts with this the AGM. CIC, you need to ask yourself how many, you how many AGMs account. have you attended? We are grateful for an insurance for company. For us, that is key. And, we, and we, continue we'll continue doing this for you uh, year in, year out. We did we this in November last year. You. We are, we for 2020, we are doing it again now you for 2021. Um, we are passionate and, and very innovative around how we do our things. Just That's a cooperative spirit. Uh, if you look at the cooperative and their growth, they started off by just uh, contributing a little money Asante, to save uh, Asante, for, for tomorrow. Sana. But today, they're literally Never in big investments. Sana. They are almost in every Ay, sector yes. of the economy. Asante. That's what we are also following um, as, as a trajectory for us as well. Uh, we, we are very results driven. The team who have just come here know that we are tasking everyone to ensure that you, when you work with us, the results can show. When those results show, they always filter through all the way down to the shareholders. Um, and of course, overally, we are, we are relying very much on the cooperative spirit. That is our journey. Dear Having begun the company in 1968. Um, the chief executive in Kenya. officer of uh, in Life, by 2014, we had gotten into South Sudan. And, uh, what I enjoy most uh, by 2015, my we were in Uganda. Is and that same year we were in Malawi. Uh, we will focus more business, on what we are doing in Uganda. Among the businesses that we are offering within the entire group job. is to give you general insurance, At CIC, give you life insurance, life, every day give you medical insurance, day. and give you asset but management week, services for the entire group. Set it aside in Uganda, we are focused at, at the moment only on the first two, but very soon we'll be handling all the four. 
as in Guadalajara. We have who we are Our regional headquarters are in Kenya. We and we are so we'll having more than 1 million customers who are served each and every single day who we are today in our business. Of your support. In we Nairobi, we are listed that, um, from 2012 going, to date, and we are one of the best performing companies in this obviously in, in, in Nairobi, in Kenya, and by extension in East Africa. I wish you all 75% the best. of the shareholding of this company happy is by cooperators, by cooperative unions, by circles, by individual members who are members of those circles, 75%. In Uganda, we are probably just about about 9%, thereabouts. We expect that number to, go, to grow much faster than it has been doing in the past. The single largest shareholder of the business, and there was a lot of, we had some discussion last night uh, with some leading circles, and there was a lot of talk around how My is it is that we don't have a cooperative Daniel bank in Uganda. The largest BCIC shareholder of this business, the largest individual shareholder in this business, apart from the circles, is the cooperative bank uh, of Kenya. Insurer. Thank you very what is our cost structure? So that might not be very clear, uh, depending on where you are seated, but our group structure is such that we have the holdings company in Kenya, which is what we are calling the CIC group. CIC group then has uh, subsidiaries, starting off with the general insurance business in Kenya, and then the life insurance business in Kenya, the asset management business in Kenya, uh, and then they are quickly moving uh, fast to, to do uh, micro insurance. Uh, it's, it's basically it's just about done, and we should also have that relayed in, in Uganda going forward. Outside of the Kenyan business that now has uh, five companies, four companies, of course five plus the holdings company, we then come into the regions and we have a company in Malawi uh, for doing general business and life business. We've got a company in South Sudan, which is a composite company, basically doing all lines of insurance under one individual company. And then you've got three companies in Uganda. Now, the three companies in Uganda are such that we are, we are having the holdings company, that is where I sit uh, as the managing director, and then we have got the two subsidiary companies, that is where you have CIC Life, the business, and CIC General Insurance, the business. So that's how our overall structure operates. Um, just going to highlight some of the select properties that we have, and the reason I'm doing this is to just bring it into our picture that this is what you want to see in Uganda again uh, going forward. Um, we must, might have been quite a long time from 2015, but I can tell you for a fact that working together, we should be able to achieve this. So this one of this, where our headquarters in Kenya sit at, that property is owned by the business. Uh, there are two wings, uh, that's also part of it. Uh, and uh, in terms of our global rating, uh, we, we've got a respectable global, global rating within the financial uh, circles. So anybody who wants to do business with us will not really have questions, not a lot of questions to ask about our financial strength or stability. About CSC in Uganda, so I have mentioned that we came here in 2015. We are primarily owned by two entities. The first entity is the CIC group. The second entity, which is very important for us, is the cooperative movement in Uganda. Principally, when we came in, we came in under UCA, United Cooperative, uh, Uganda Cooperative Alliance, and uh, UKUSKU. So those two were the primary anchor owners other than CSE group that uh, joined us to form the company. But over time, we have seen an improvement in terms of that ownership with single cooperative unions and single circles coming in to purchase shares. As late as this February, uh, I think we've now seen a very high trajectory of uh, circles buying shares with us. It's a testament of the kind of confidence that circles are beginning to have with us and the cooperative unions are beginning to have with us in terms of uh, how we are doing business, in terms of what the future portends. I was in uh, Kasese in, in January this year, and uh, when we were launching that office, a circle comes up and says, we are buying those shares now, now. And they indeed bought shares and instead of paying cash. Uh, to me, that's a testament uh, that we are really uh, looking at a very bright future and we don't want to leave anybody uh, behind in this journey. So I've just explained that. Uh, that is now specific to Uganda and that's how our structure uh, sits around. In this customer service I'll week quickly. that is internationally celebrated, that is Aha Towers. As Aha Towers is where currently the head office for CIC Africa, for the uh, Uganda Insurance you. Limited, is hosted. Uh, a few things have been changing here and there.
we have an we office have in a, a Tobani Center, which before we was a catch house. We have just moved to a new building uh, for the town the office, uh, effective February of this year. And I think the team who are now working from there, basically it's a sales office, are fairly comfortable and are fairly happy with what they have there. In the regions, we are in Marara, we are in Bale, we are in Kasese, and we also have a satellite office in Jinja. We expect to be at least in the north through some sort of presence. We, ex we are already in the eastern side and we are already in the western side. Central, we, I spoke about the Bani Center. Uh, that's where we run the operations from. All right, so why would you want to deal with us? So these figures are going to show you um, a, a, few met a few numbers in terms of how we have operated. Uh, in the Mere last uh, seven years, My name is Tom uh, just for your appreciation, the chief executive officer. This shows Chelsea our Africa what we call our premium and, uh, per year uh, performance, my gross rate and premiums. Is walking the journey with the so customer. So when it began in uh, all the challenges okay, this, that are there in the about business, 2019, and our premium for the life business was 8.3 billion. At CIC, the next year, which was 2020, we did 8.6 billion. But this week, we specifically in 2021, set it aside to honor our we were able to do 12.1 billion. We've walked you can along see journey that growth together with you as pattern. a customer. And then when we and hit 12.1 billion, because of you, our customer, uh, the board told us we cannot you're not doing good enough. Take your so what they did was to ask us to remember we that we must do 17.4 billion by end of 2022. We hope and pray that uh, uh, we it's, a, it's a tall order, but our teams are on the ground trying to do their best to ensure that this is achieved by the time this year closes. I wish you all the best. May God bless you and An insurance company's work. job or responsibility is not just to receive premiums. When we receive premiums, we ask ourselves, what do our stakeholders expect of us? The key thing that we must do is to then honor our commitments to our customers. In terms of honoring our commitments to our customers, we then speak into how much are we paying in claims year in, year out. And this is what we have done in the past, from, the, from the past. In 2019, we paid about 2.8 billion. That goes back into ordinary Uganda citizens to help them mitigate Lanyo, losses that they've incurred, the to help the them reconstruct their businesses, network, to like pay to for their you know, income when they are uh, in, in retirement, or when they are sure. sick, or when they Thank have had an accident, much. or when they are incapacitated. That money goes directly back to them. When we were in 2020, we paid 4.3 billion back to the Ugandan economy. In 2021, we were paying 7 billion. This was the life business alone. We actually paid 7 billion out. The claims are going up astronomically, but you also realize from the previous slide, our premiums have also been going, going up uh, reasonably well. This year, we however are expecting that we'll be paying much less than we paid last year. We still expect that our growth in terms of the premiums paid will be much higher than last year. The question is, why would our claims then go down? Now, last year something happened in the entire insurance space. The last two years, we had COVID happening, and unfortunately a lot of us lost lives or loved ones. We had, strangely, in the same year, floods happening, and then as if God was still not very mad with us, he chose to again deliver to us drought. And so that then leads naturally to claims uh, going up astronomically. This year, we are seeing very good trajectories. The COVID pandemic we have now isn't looking as worse as it was when it first arrived. So the Omicron will come, infect us, perhaps many of us here have been affected or infected, but it doesn't seem to be killing as fast as, as the previous strains. So we expect that we are going to see a reduction in terms of the losses in lives and, and then also uh, the way it affects businesses. Literally, everywhere I go in Uganda, I see people not even bothering to wear masks. And why is that the case? Uh, it's because uh, we've got to a point where we seem to be accepting that you can be able to live with this thing. It's not just in Uganda, it is almost the entire world. It seems to be having some, you know, seismic jumps in, um, if you go to China, if you monitor the news, but we expect it should be managed fairly soon. So that's the reason why we expect that we'll not be paying as much as we did pay out last year. However, these figures on the projections are bound to change any moment. Anything could happen. And when that anything happens, it hits us directly. When we go to the general business, I, I want to give us now this from 2015. So when we started the business, we were only underwriting or having income of 391 million Uganda shillings. By the time we closed last year, 
we were doing 24.3 billion Uganda shillings. Of course, there have been, you know, jumps in between. 2020 was a, not a very good year for us. Uh, we saw our premium slump, but the reason, major reasoning was ab about businesses closing. From April of 2020, uh, literally, no, from November of 2020, running through to, to end of last year, not so much, not all the institutions that you work with were working uh, at 100% capacity. So that did affect the premium uh, income as well. Look at what we've been paying out in claims. So the worst year, if you were to take that angle, was in 2019 and we paid 7 billion um, Uganda shillings. But the way we look at it is we are paying this money back to the Ugandan economy, to ordinary citizens of, the, of Uganda, who are the persons who really contribute to the growth of the Ugandan economy. So it gives us a lot of strength, a lot of hope that tomorrow's solution will be better. The moment we pay a claim, we normally realize that our clients want to come back and come back and refer others coming back to us. In this uh, customer service week uh, that is internationally as celebrated, as, possible. As, as I said earlier, we thank you for being a In 2019, in 2021, COVID-19 was 21% of all the claims that we experienced in the business. That's a new phenomenon, but then it comes in and gives you a 21% hit on your financials. That is something major. It did affect our business, but we'll see uh, generally how we performed even despite all of that. So just a little bit of life insurance, and I, I'll be a bit uh, you know, pictorial around this. Uh, for me, it's straightforward. The reason you want to have life insurance is, number one, you might die too soon. When you die too soon, what happens? When you die too soon, several things could happen. One, you leave loved ones behind who still need a lot of financial support, financial care might not be really in your places. And that could mean, unfortunately, that it comes to the ends of their lives. Is that what we want? Certainly not. So if you have some sort of insurance savings for them, they'll be able to pull off from where you've left them. Number two, becoming incapacitated. If you are in a gainful employment today, this life has got no certainty. Tomorrow, you could, uh, and the way I see border borders operating in this town of ours, Anything could happen, and you don't have a leg anymore. That could also imply that you don't have a job anymore. But then, do you stop eating? Do you stop uh, having financial needs? The answer is no. If you have insurance in place to take care of you in the event that incapacitation happens, you are always safer even when you have those accidents. Number three, <laughs> don't take this against me. You could live too long. I don't know if that is the right wording to use, but it's the reality. Uh, when I first uh, got into employment, it was very rare to see people in their 80s. It was very rare. Today, the reality is, it is a common sight to see people who are in their 90s. You walk, see them walk along the streets. You see them drive themselves around. It's a reality. How is that? Because medical uh, services have advanced. Today, things that would kill us so easily <coughs> 20 years ago, uh, we could still elongate our lives today as long as you have the right medication, as long as you have the right doctor. Can you imagine living too long when you don't have money? That is when disaster now happens. Because at old age, if you don't have your own money to take care of you, your problems are always just going to come with a bang. But most importantly, our cultures have changed. We were born into a system where the young took care of the old by default. In today's world, it, I can almost 100% say that it's just the Asians who are still believing in that, you know, belief, yeah, of only, the, of the young taking care of, of the old. So you'll find Asians live in one house, a two-bedroom house, but they are, they are four generations. There is a great-grandfather and grandmother, there is a grandfather and grandmother, there is a mother and father, and then you have the children, and then perhaps some other cousins. In our setup, and you can take this to the bank. The children that we are selling today, 10 years from now, they'll tell you, Daddy, you want to tell me you never said for your retirement. You want to tell me for your children who you sired when I was already in university, you were selling them for me to come and pay for them school fees. If you hear those questions coming, don't think it can never happen to you. What we try to do is to prepare ourselves for the fact that God has loved us so much today that is giving us more life in the future. Now, 
So this is a pictorial uh, illustration that is cutting across, uh, you know, the young uh, to, the, to, the, to the aged. The bottom line of this is, always look at a timeline. Where are you? What do you need to do? When you are still under 30, uh, I think even God seems to give you a few, uh, you know, chances to make mistakes because they, you still have the chance to correct them in the future by the time you get to 40. So you can eat everything you made in the 30s, but by the time you, in, in the 20s, by the, time, by the time you hit 30, if you are not thinking about setting up your own structure, calling, to call it a home, uh, taking kids to school, uh, having some savings aside, then something is, you need to be, to be advised better. There you can still take risks. From 30 you can then take risks with your finances. You know, you can do equity, uh, which are pr uh, primarily can be very volatile. But by the time you hit 40, you need to start thinking, am I still having the energy to continue investing in these highly volatile areas? Some of us seem to believe that uh, the best way to invest, what do you call this? I call the matatus where I come from. Here they're called what? Taxis. Taxis. Some of us have retired and picked up some money, even from our own, the sales of our, uh, you know, our bananas or whatever, and put all of it in a matatu, right? In a taxi. And then you get a call at 2 a.m. in the night from your, matatu dri your taxi driver. They tell you that, uh, Sevo, we have a problem. You ask which problem? Uh, the matatu is in the, is in the river. The taxi is now right inside the river. Have you heard those happen in Uganda? And they happen, right? And that is how all of the money that you have invested all of your life is gone. Now at that point you want to think, is this really the right business for me to do? But even also as you advanced to your 50, 60, you are perhaps an engineer. Engineer Kachuchi is here with us. Are you going to be an engineer forever? If you are holding, you know even mechanics call themselves engineers, eh? Uh, for how long can a mechanic keep holding uh, the exhaust, carrying the entire exhaust? At some point, the body starts waning in. It starts giving in. And it reminds you, it's time to go home. At that point, don't fight against nature. But you can only do that if you have done well in saving for your past or in your past. If you didn't do that, then the problem starts in there. If we have children... The best investment, the best inheritance you can give to your child is what? In today's world, education. Education. We no longer have property to bequeath. It's education. When we give our children education, we are certain that tomorrow is secured. But how do we give it? Education has become very expensive today. When I first got employed, I think we were always categorized. Uh, from where I come from, they, you either went to a group of schools or to a government school. I was being told by one of my colleagues that even in Uganda, that is now the case. You either went to a, pub, a group of schools, or a public school, or to a private school. Now, wh whether, whichever setup you choose, never forget one thing. That you don't have always, always have to get money out of your pocket to pay for school fees. Insurance can do that very well for you. Depending on how you structure the plan for your child. And don't wait. This message might not be relevant for those of us here who are 50s and above. Uh, but it's amazing that you could still pass back home to your own children, to your old friends, to your old employees. Start early. In the Western world, people start planning for children's education as they start planning to become pregnant. In Uganda and Kenya, we start planning when the child is already in high school. It's too late. Start planning the moment, at least when you get your newborn. The reason is, it is much cheaper at that stage than it would be when the child is already 16 or 15, going to high school. Start early, you get much more benefits. Get an investment plan for yourself. At CIC, we have a lot of investment plans. Our agents will speak to you about them. Put in money that come in there and close your eyes. Stop the habit of putting in money, but never forget that that money is there. Because, I, like in the bank, do any of us, and let's be honest, how many of us have money that is saved in the bank? By a show of hands. Saved in the bank. Saved in the bank, okay. Uh -huh. I can see by your faces. You know, when I look at your face, I can tell you really have a lot to save. There were only four hands that were up out of very many of us. 
The reasoning is, the money in the bank is available for you any moment you want it. And the moment you know you have money, like in your pocket, there is some certain that keeps itching you to remind you money is there. Money is there. So you've saved for two years, then you remember, I have this money, but then there's this, there's this wedding coming up. There's this, you call it quangula, coming up. There is this, uh, and then at that point, somehow, a brother of yours who's, who you clearly know, you, you, in our family, you are very daft people, but now the son of this very daft one passes the exams very highly, but they have no school fees. Then you remember, I have some money in the bank. It's very easy to let, then get in there and get that money out. When you tie it to an insurance product, what happens is that ma that money is locked in there for a specific period of time, and you can plan with it very well. Because you are forced. You are forced. Forced saving is the best saving. Put it there, forget about it. I think I will not go back into this, but the reason you're putting that broken guard there is, I have just mentioned, keep it there and forget about it. When a human being wants money, they'll do anything to get that money, including breaking that guard where the money is kept, to, if the guard cannot be opened, to get the money out. Just make it a habit among within your soul. Make it your own habit to say, I have put it in here for a purpose, it remains here for that purpose. Each and every one of us know that at some point we lose a loved one. When we lose a loved one, oftentimes it's normally without notice, almost always without notice. And it comes with financial burden. Do we have money aside that is going to help us during that moment? Several plans are available within insurance that can take care of movement of the body, embalming of the body, transportation of the body, including burial of that body, and even feeding those who've come to mourn with the uh, bereaved. You don't want to be caught unawares, then you start getting into circles where you start running for you know, donations from left, right, and center, and that's the point, unfortunately, when most of us also decide to run away from you. When you most need them, oftentimes they're not there. But by putting aside something little, 10,000, 5,000, 2,000, every end of month, you can be assured that tomorrow, when I have a funeral expense for myself, my employees, my colleagues, my friends, we can then have something to take care of us at that point. It is very cheap if you do it in small chunks. It becomes very expensive if you wait until the last minute when a death has occurred. We are introducing a new product to the market. You probably haven't seen the flyers because I have advised the team to check that the name Kameza is properly uh, registered with the authorities. Because Kameza, I'm told, is a very common term in, in Uganda. I will not be surprised if it happens that somebody else has registered that name. But subject to it not being withdrawn, we are bringing to you a plan that is going to encompass typically targeting the small and market uh, enterprises, small and medium market enterprises. To provide for you cover at the point of death that is going to take care of you, your family, and your family could be extended to include your mother, father, uh, father-in-law, mother-in-law, uh, adopted children, brother, sister, in the same plan at a very small fee. So that whatever you are seated doing your business, if an emergency hits you that leads to death, you have the list of worries to say, where do I now get money to proceed with the burial? Something I find very impressive in Uganda is most burials take place within the shortest time possible. Uh, where I come from, normally, we, we, we go up to about a month before a body is buried. You can imagine how, how expensive that could be. If you have this plan in time, and we'll be rolling it out very soon, you should be able to take care uh, of your uh, funeral needs. This also speaks to the same funeral expense cover, but it's largely talking about the nuclear uh, family. That's you, yourself, your spouse, uh, your children, uh, and just extending it slightly to your mother, uh, I mean to your parents. The CIC loan guard, it, uh, uh, let me say it, put it differently. It should be a sin for you to have a loan that is not insured. If you have a loan, do not have that loan not insured. Whether it is a loan from the circle, from the bank, 
from a microfinance or from any other organization that is registered, we are happy to ensure that loan for you. It helps in reducing your risk as a SACO official, as a SACO chairman or board of directors, it helps in reducing that load, the risk to you as a person who has borrowed this money. Such that tomorrow, if an accident occurs to you, if you pass on, God forbid, and or if you are retrenched, nobody comes to you as an individual to ask for this money to be paid. CIC comes in to pay that money back to the circle, back to the bank, back to the MFI, or, and ensure that at least when you are gone, nobody comes to rob your family. Some of these banks we take loans from can really be punitive. The moment you, are, you die and there was no security for that loan, they come and take anything else they can find, including the chicken that ran in your compound. Then, to just wrap up on the, the life insurance bit, we also have a group life cover. A group life cover speaks into you as an employer, having employees, and even though the loss does not require you to have a group life cover for them, what we always encourage is, as a responsible employer, as a person who takes care of the well-being of, of, of his or her employees, it, it matters that at least you have a cover in place to take care of your staff and even yourself in the event that something accidental happens to you, in the event of a death or sickness, to ensure that you're able to come in and pay as opposed to you paying the salaries that perhaps, I'll give a typical example. So you have an employee who has been affected. This employee is sick and cannot come to work for the next two weeks. Who pays the salary? Who pays the salary? The circle, the employer, right? But do you know that you can throw that away and say, okay, fine, I'll pay you the salary, but insurance comes in and pay back what I've paid. You know that. If you didn't know, know that you can do that for you. You don't have to pay your employees salaries if they are incapacitated. CIC will come in and pay that salary. Talk to our agents. We'll give you that solution. This, these are some of the key products that we have uh, within the general business space. Key point to note is that we are the largest agriculture insurer in this country. That's a fact. We are the largest agriculture insurer in this country. Uh, if you look at, uh, if you go anywhere where you hear they talk about the agriculture consortium, we are the lead there. If you look at our figures, and we'll see them when you do the financials, you'll see that indeed we are the lead in that space. If you don't have, if you have any agriculture cover, that's all right. If you don't have agriculture cover, even at the individual level, talk to us. We'll give the solution. And if you're doing business in any other area, just look around and see, what don't I have that I need here? If you have a house, for example, you need a domestic package. You have a house of your own. You need a domestic package in that place. A maid can have an accident there. Who pays when the maid is injured? A visitor can come visiting you. And then, uh, you know, as they are climbing the stairs, they slip and, and, and lose a leg. Who pays for that? You know, the house could be burnt at some point. Uh, do you re begin reconstruction by yourself or do you want CSC to pay? We obviously would want to pay that. And you'll be surprised that the premiums are very cheap. Very cheap. Insurance is expensive in our heads until we get to ask for a quotation. So do not shy to ask. But for each and every circle that is here with us today, there is no way I will be happy to see you as a circle not having insurance and not having it with CIC. Because CIC is basically a cooperative insurance company. That is the only company that has called you to the AGM in so many years, but there's no other competitor within that space. So either you choose to do business with us or we are doing something wrong. I will be happy that we correct what you're doing wrong to help you be partners within this journey. So this slide really speaks about our market positioning um, in, the, in the country. And, and we see it as a very, a very big you know, step that we are, we are obviously having. The two biggest cooperative bodies in this country are our major shareholders with huge amounts of money. That is UCA and Cusco. The largest circles in this country are our shareholders. All the way to the ministry, we've got very good will. We expect the minister would be coming. He may not come. If he, if he doesn't come, the PS may be coming. If he doesn't come, we have one of our directors is the registrar of cooperatives in this country. We've got all that goodwill. 
what we haven't done as management, and we've been spoken to well enough, is to get much closer to you, to listen to you, hear what we haven't done right, hear what we need to do going forward, and then be able to deliver on those uh, specific requirements. The sky is only the limit for us. CIC is big at the group level and in Kenya, not because of wealthy, rich people in Kenya. CIC is big in Kenya because of cooperative movement, without which it wouldn't be there. The Cooperative Bank of Kenya is among the biggest banks in this region because of the cooperative movement. CIC will become the biggest insurer in Uganda because of the cooperative movement. I have spoken largely about this. I will not want to go through this, also in the interest of time. And so I will want to say at this point, thank you very much. I will be back again at some point to speak about the financials. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, MD. Members, kindly join me to give a round of applause to our MD. Thank you so much, MD. Shareholders and members, you have heard how we are performing. And I want to tell you, I've been just here, I've been sharing with the cooperators outside. They are following. Over 300 cooperatives, they are here following. And they are all asking, when do we buy shares? When do we do business with the CIC? Because we all realize that we have actually been donating money when is going? I remember I was telling some people that for the time I was a general manager of a circle for eight years, I could not realize that I was donating money to multinationals. So this is an opportunity for us as cooperators to consolidate our resources, to have our own insurance company that is there for us, that we own, we use, we control, and benefit out of it. So we need to take the message outside there. Take the gospel. Let our people not continue. You can imagine you are a circle, you are milking poor people, and you are mobilizing money, bringing it to these multinational insurance companies. At the end of the day, there is no return. But here with the CIC, looking at our performance, we have heard the scenario of Kenya. You see how Kenya is in terms of insurance, in terms of the bank. So after the insurance cooperators, we are going to the next level of having a cooperative bank. Can't we move? Don't we have the capacity? Yes, we can as cooperators. I want to thank you, MD, and uh, we're expecting the minister very soon. He's still tied up in another meeting. The Honorable Minister of Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives will be joining us as our chief guest. And then he'll also be joined by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, Honorable Geraldine Sari. We shall also have the Registrar of Cooperatives. He's supposed to be here with us because he's among the directors, but they are having a meeting. That's why all of them have not come, but I've been I'm in touch with them. We have been discussing, so they will be joining us shortly. So members, thank you so much, MD and the team for the good work done, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. So let me invite our company secretary to read a notice, and then we officially proceed with the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. So the notice of the annual general meeting was circulated well in advance. I'll read it out for you. Pursuant to Section 140 of the Companies Act 2012, notice is hereby given that the sixth annual general meeting of CIC Africa Uganda Limited will be held at the Imperial Royal Hotel Kampala on 29th April 2022 at 10 a.m. To, uh, to transact the following business. Uh, first is preliminaries, that's to table the proxies, seek wave of notice period, and note the presence of a quorum. You'll note that we've already completed some of these matters. The second item is on minutes, to confirm the minutes of the previous AGM held on 12th November 2021. 
The third is on financial statements. To receive, consider, and if thought fit, adopt the annual reports and the audited financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2021, together with the director's and auditor's reports thereon. Fourth is on director's remuneration to authorize the board to fix the remuneration of the directors for the year ending 31st December 2022 this year. Rotation of directors to note the retirement by rotation of a third of the directors in accordance with the articles of association. Then six on appointment of auditors to consider and if deemed fit to reappoint PWC as the company's auditor for the ensuing year and to authorize the directors to fix their remuneration. The final item will be any other business to transact any other business of the company which may properly be transacted at an annual general meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, our company secretary. So members, we have heard all of that. Uh, but I know some people traveled a bit early and for that matter, I'm requesting that if possible, we have just a very brief coffee or tea break. For the interest of time, I think the, the MC should direct us on how to proceed. But I request shareholders that let's speak our coffee or tea, and then we do it very fast, because time is key. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tea is ready. Uh, as you walk out into the, from out of that door, the team is already. Sandra, just wave. Please wave. That is a political wave. Wave as a cooperator. Thank you so much. So I request through the chair that then we go have a break tea. Let's do it in local time. I think 20 minutes is maximum. Uh, 10 would be the best. Uh, it's ready. We have three serving points there. So we should pick. Right, I've also been guided that we can pick and come back here and then we have a, 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 a working tea of sorts. Thank you so much for the guidance. Uh, so let's proceed with uh, our tea. Thank you. Smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this Customer Service Week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are, are striving, striving to be the best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwebare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Shores Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this customer service week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are, are striving, striving to be the best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwebale dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you at our customers for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this customer service week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And, and we, we are, are striving, striving to be the best, best just for you. Kwa wateja wetu wa CIC, tunawapenda. Asante, asante sana. Mwebare dala. Dear customers, my name is Tom Umiti, the Chief Executive Officer of CIC Life Africa Assurance Limited. And uh, what I enjoy most about my current role is walking the journey with the customer, going through all the challenges that are there in the business and having a happy and a smiling customer at the end of it all. At CIC Life, every day is a customer day, but this week we specifically set it aside to honor our customers and appreciate our customers. We've walked a long journey together with you as a customer, and we are who we are today because of you, our customer. We cannot and will never take your support for granted. We know we are who we are today because of your support. We hope and pray that um, we keep the partnership going, we grow together in this partnership, and I wish you all the best. May God bless you and happy customer week. My name is Gladys Laniero. On behalf of the CIC branch network, I would like to appreciate you, our customers, for choosing us as your preferred insurer. Thank you very much.
In this customer service week that is internationally celebrated as CIC, we thank you for being our valued customers. We are grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we pledge to continue meeting expectations. Throughout the lockdown, we have continued to support you and we continue serving you passionately. You are the heart and soul of our business. And we are As you can see on page five, they have been adopted. Thank you so much, members. Thank you. So we proceed with the financial statements. Or is there any question, anything before we proceed to financial statements? Anybody with any question, any concern, any matter to raise? On the minutes and matters arising. Yes, sir. There are two hands there, that side. Uh, thank you, Chair. My name is Moses Okello, uh, Chairperson Franciscan Investment Cooperative. Uh, indeed, uh, the minutes is a fair reflection of the discussions uh, held then. But arising uh, from this, I think there are some action uh, areas that needed action. So at what point do we get to know that actually this was done? Um, as I see here, I mean at uh, 6, 11, 2021, company secretary to make the necessary filings at the company's registry. So I thought that should also be on record. I thank you, Chair. I'm Open Francis Jimmy, General Manager Local Circle. I stand out to propose that this minute should be accompanied with the list of attendance. Okay. Thank you so much. So company secretary. Okay, thank you very much for the Chair, there's one more hand. Oh, oh okay. So Sorry. let's pick three and then she responds. Thank you. Thank you. So one on the Hassan uh Nakasongola Rurosako. Uh, partly, my concern has been addressed. Ka However, ka kindly, shareholder, you speak up so that we can pick very well. Yes. I said, um, Sawananda Hassan, Nakasongola uh, Rurosako. I was wondering about uh, the attendance. Partly, it has been addressed. Then, about the members present, I can say only two, just more light to be thrown there. But I think uh, as the cooperators, shareholders, we, we, I think we, are, we shall be addressing the attendance list. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, company secretary. Thank you very much. On the action items on page five, I can confirm that after the meeting, we filed with the company's uh, registry resolutions that pertain to these uh, matters. So the first one was for the reappointment of PwC as the external auditor. That was filed with the registry. The second one was on uh, amending uh, the articles of association to allow for electronic meetings. So we also filed that with the registry and uh, uh, filed a copy of the amended articles of association as well. So that was completed. And the second issue was on the attendance list. Thank you very much for pointing this out. And uh, going forward, actually starting with these minutes, we're going to attach an attendance list so that we can have a full record of everybody that has attended the meeting, along with a representative from each uh, circle, so that we have a full record going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, members. And thanks so much, company secretary. We have one hand there. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I'm Mrs. Flavia Mgisa and Navarongo, Chairperson Kijra Sako from Fort Potro. I'm sorry this is my first time to attend this AGM, but at least I could like to understand 
which criteria do you use to get these directors? And uh, another concern which I have, according to the directors we have here, gender balance was not considered. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, on the criteria, the company secretary will handle that. And then on the gender balance, I think members, we are gender sensitive. Directors, I, I know, you know, you know, in Africa, when you talk of gender, people tend to think of women. But even for us men, by the way, we are marginalized. So we need to be empowered. <laughs> but uh, we have Director Josephine. We have Director. You stand up kindly. Just let this alone. Thank you so much. I think we are gender sensitive. Thank you uh, on, the, on the criteria. Uh, members, let us stand up and recognize Mr. Matthias Katamba, who is our principal guest. He is the president of Uganda Bankers Association. He is the chairman. Uh, why, why are you avoiding president? <laughs> eh? <laughs> Don't avoid that word. <laughs> Mr. Matthias Katamba, you are most welcome. Shareholders and directors who can take our seats. You are most welcome. He's a senior banker, and we knew each other when he was uh, at Amphi, yes. the president of Amphi. You know that's why I always say you're a president, because you are our president at Amphi which is the Association of Microfinance Institutions of Uganda. So once a president, always a president. Thank you so much. So we can now proceed with the, the company secretary on the criteria, and then very fast we move to the next item on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that question. The question was, uh, what is the criteria that's used to select directors? So what we base on, uh, first for the subsidiaries is the Insurance Act and the regulations. And generally for all companies, including this one, we also rely on best corporate governance practice. So what, uh, what is provided for in the Insurance Act is that a director must be somebody who um, has uh, substantial knowledge and can uh, direct a company. So you'll find that somebody who has business expertise, somebody who has a background in financial and accounting, somebody who has a legal background and also an industry practice, insurance industry practice, will be considered for directorship. So what the company has done is that it has developed criteria basing on the law and also basing on governance practice to identify those people who it feels um, would be best to serve as directors of the company. And after these are selected, then things like uh, due diligence, background checks, ETC are conducted to ensure that indeed this person doesn't have um, some issues that they might be hiding that could pop up later and affect the reputation of the company. So after that internal procedure is completed, they are then presented to the shareholders for confirmation of their appointment as directors. I hope that uh, answers your question. Thank you. Thank you so much, company secretary. Shareholders, you know, we are guided by our regulator, which is the insurance regulatory authority. So we have to make sure that we are compliant with everything. And I want to thank you for always guiding us, make sure that we don't have any issue with our regulator. So allow me to invite the MD to present the financials. Thank you. Uh, I know we, we rushed ourselves through breakfast, but I hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I once went to a faction where People refuse to 
proceed with the meeting until they have eaten. But ideally, in an AGM setup, you should run through without any interruptions. So next time, we'll make sure you're fed before we start the meeting. All right, so um, this is a very brief presentation showing, really, it's just a set of requirement showing how you performed in the, in, in the year that is under review. But before I do that, I want to introduce to you our principal auditors uh, who are here with us, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, I'll give them a chance to speak themselves. Before then, I can do the financials. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Eric. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Chair. Good morning, cooperators. My name is Clive Mayombe from PricewaterhouseCoopers, and with me is uh, Mark uh, Noagaba uh, from PricewaterhouseCoopers as well. Uh, we'll present our opinion on the 2021 financial statements after the group MD has uh, presented uh, the financial performance and financial position. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Clive. Uh, so I'll take us through this quickly. Uh, as they say, all protocols have served now that I know the principal guest has arrived. Uh, I hope I don't abuse any protocol. So this is, these are our financials as at end of year 2021. In terms of uh, our gross written premium, you can, see, uh, you can see the growth. This column is for showing what growth we have registered in the year. Uh, so we met both our, target, our budget targets, but also on the year, previous year comparison, we were up by 35%. That is one of the biggest growths in this industry. We accept to keep it that way. Uh, this year and any subsequent year. If you look at total income, equally, we are growing at a reasonable level, even though compared to our budget, we still were disappointed that we didn't achieve that. We dropped by about 15%. Um, and that is primarily because of a lot of reinsurance uh, seedings, which ideally is not a bad thing. So you see there's a lot of growth in our insurance uh, premium seedings in that year. But what we are doing with the insurance seedings is we pay more to our insurers to reduce the risk that we are exposing the business to. So that what, no matter how big a claim occurs, for instance, if we were insuring a plane for Uganda Airlines and it has an accident, uh, we should still be able to pay without having to have the adverse effects of that to our business. If you come down here, you're looking at profitability uh, at the end of the year in terms of profit before tax. So there's a big slump compared to the previous year. Which, so we made two billion in profits the previous year, and then we end up with a 635 million shillings in losses that same year, uh, the next year. Now what's happening here, ideally, is that this is a result of certain deliberate decisions we took as a business to ensure that certain debts that we thought were doubtful were no longer featuring in our books to impair, uh, uh, you know, continue having our, our, our financials doubted in, in, in the future. So what we did is we took that hit, and that definitely meant that we made a loss. Uh, but I'll show you how that is now taking shape in, in this year in terms of what benefits we are realizing as we go along. Uh, this is our balance sheet, and I think the the, the major notable thing here is in terms of what, how much worth of assets we have. Um, we are at about 42 billion Uganda shillings in terms of assets, uh, things that you can call on uh, today in the event that uh, they, there's any call that is required uh, to, to the business that is financial. If you look at equity, we are still at a negative figure, 5.6 billion. But this again is as a result of accumulated losses over a number of years from the time that we started doing business. So we haven't been consistently profitable in the business, but that's, those are some of the things that you're trying to correct to get into a region where profitability is almost certain, it will never be certain, but at least almost certain going forward so that we can benefit you as the shareholders to bring in a regime that starts paying dividends back to the shareholders of the business. When I then look at the key issues that perhaps affected um, us in the year 2021. Number one is the reinsurance expense that I've spoken about from earlier. There was a very big growth in how much you paid to reinsurers. 
by 85%. It's a good thing for me, as I've said earlier, we are trying to reduce the risk that CIC insurance as a business is exposed to. That then means that that goes into hitting our, our, our bottom line uh, to some extent. But overally, we are not exposed to the extent that we can close a business uh, anytime soon. But then I also go into claims ex expenses. It also went up by 63%. And as I had did, done in my earlier presentation, this is primarily about two things. One, three things. In that same year, 2020 and 2021, we had COVID happening, and it had its own adverse effects. We had floods happening, and after floods, it was followed by drought. All of those lead to losses, but when losses occur, we must pay. So you see our claims going up astronomically as a result of those. But I'm glad to say that all of those claims that we incurred were paid. Even when the industry intimated at not paying COVID claims, and the regulator came with a, you know, a statement or a circular that said, you decide individually if you want to pay those claims or not, we went ahead and paid, just because we want to build the relationships that we have uh, with you as, uh, as uh, with the, those clients that we have. What did we, do we think worked well for us in 2020, 2021? As I said earlier, number one, we saw that 5% growth in terms of our premiums. We expect to see this growing around this region going forward. We saw a reduction of 68% in terms of our insurance premium balances. So we are coming from a backdrop where our insurance premiums are not being paid on time. In 2021, we are taking a bold decision and saying we must pay this. And when we paid them, those reinsurance uh, payables reduced by about 65%. To the extent that the regulator writes back to us, informing us of the good work that we are doing around that area. That then means anybody looking at our books would still be more interested in doing business with us as a reinsurer. But we also began something that is very important, and it's not just Uganda. It is all over uh, the group, a business transformation process. We are saying we cannot keep doing business the same way and expect the same results. If it has failed us, we've got to change it. If it has worked for us, we've got to improve on it. So we are doing that, and very passionate about it, and at the end of the day, you will see this start bringing us results in the year 2022. I am showing you here a projection of how the business has performed from 2018. So you, you note from 2018 going into 2020, there seemed to a steady slump in the business. Uh, and, and obviously these are reasons that we've diagnosed and known what really they were. But in 2020, we took an upward trajectory. Then in 2021, suddenly it was a very steep jump up. If you look at 2021, for instance, look at the growth there as at end of 2022, as at end of Q1. Our premiums are up 115% from the same period last year. We are already starting to see the, the, some of the plans we are putting in place to just ensure that the business keeps improving year in, year out. So despite the results that perhaps are not the best to your, our expectation as shareholders, the trajectory is looking exactly where you want the shareholders to be. I think directors and uh, shareholders and uh, invited guests, this then summarizes my presentation on the financials before I invite the auditor to read um, uh, their opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Group MD. Chair, uh, our opinion on the 2021 financial statements this, uh, in this booklet is uh, set out on pages four to six. Uh, members, uh, we audited the financial statements of CIC Africa Uganda Limited for their ended 31st December 2021. We issued our opinion on the 30th of March uh, 2022, and our opinion reads as follows. In our opinion, the financial statements give a true and fair view of the state of the financial affairs of CIC Africa Uganda Limited and its subsidiaries together the group as of 31st December 2021 and of their financial performance and their cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards and have been prepared in the manner required by the Ugandan Companies Act. Mr. Chairman, that's a summary of our opinion. It's a clear opinion on the 2021 financial statements. 
Thank you very much. Thank you so much, auditors from PWC, members, do we have any question, any point of clarification, any submission regarding the presentation of the financial statements? Thank you so much. So. There is no comment. It's okay. Mm. Thank you so much. Let's move on. Let's go back to our program. Mm. Thank you, thank you. So back to our program. We have had the financial statements presented by our auditors. So shareholders, since there is no question, we now move on to approve and adopt the financial statements. So who is moving a motion and who is seconding? Thank you. There is a hand there. Thank you. Once again, I'm Homza Desiderius from Chevron Cooperative Society. I hereby propose that the financial statements are adopted and approved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Seconded by this side. Uh, I'm Gamba Abbey, managing a very sub county circle. I raise up to say that we at least to we approve the minutes, the, the report as it was approved. Thank you, as it was proposed. Thank you. Thank you so much, members. So the financial statements have been approved and adopted by the AGM. Thank you so much, auditors, PWC, for a wonderful job and for a wonderful presentation. And I want to thank management also, because if you had not prepared very good accounts, you know auditors, we don't prepare accounts. We analyze and make an opinion. So I want to thank management for the good work done also. Thank you. Let's move on. We now hand over to the company secretary uh, to, to, to take us through the director's remuneration. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> so we are requesting the shareholders. Can you hear? I hope you can hear me. We're requesting the shareholders to authorize the board to fix their remuneration for the year ending. Uh, 31st December 2022. This is this year. This is a standard item for every meeting where shareholders uh, allow the board members to fix their remuneration basing on uh, circumstances prevailing at the time and of course also on the resources that the company has at the time. So we'll kindly request for there to be a proposer for this motion and also for a seconder. Anyone proposing? So maybe shareholders, as per the submission by the company secretary, it is the responsibility of this AGM to give mandate to the board to fix the board remuneration. And the fellow cooperators, you know, this is a company owned by cooperatives. There is some clear distinct between a company and a cooperative. Like my sister was asking, there is some difference. But we shall bother to 
go through it so that we understand and see how to move systematically. So this is a request put before you to give mandate to the board to fix the enumeration. So I want someone to move a motion and then someone will second the motion and then we proceed. Like we did last year, if you remember well, the people who were here, you remember how it was done. You mandated the board, they fixed the enumeration, the year has ended, so we have to come back and also request get permission from the AGM to continue moving like that. Thank you so much. So there is a, there are two hands already on that side. Okay, it's okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. CPA Wilson, Vice Chairman, with me, Mr. Afsako. I'm just wondering, is it all about proposing and seconding, or we are also allowed to pose some questions? Thank you so much, you are allowed. Uh, I have two questions. One, uh, looking at the financials, you recognize we are bleeding by making losses. At the same time, we want to fix the remuneration for the directors. Uh, does it mean I need some assurance that the directors have really gone through and when we fix it, uh, they are coming up with strategies that will help us come from uh, this ditch. Then, uh, secondly, going back, we are talking about, uh, actually, I, I, if I allude to your statement, we want to buy more shares uh, for from CIC as cooperators, but I really, I don't see any line uh, talking about dividends. How do we benefit as share holders if we buy shares of CIC. Thank you. Thank you so much. Second hand and then the, the MD and the company secretary will guide us. He's there. Uh, thank you. I'm still Gamba Abed, manager Nyabari Sub County Saku. And uh, I'm requesting that before we talk about, okay, we fix the remuneration for directors, we don't so feel like, okay, if we know, that we, because we did it last, last year, so how did you do it? Then such that we can determine if like previously or last year you did what you did, now, uh, the, of course the period was not good. So now we, we need to see how, di how did you do it, such that it can help us determine this year's but this year's nomination. Thank you so much. Okay, one more hand and then we come back to the MD. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm um, from Chinon Sako. Uh, I thought that before we think about the renumeration of the directors, at least they should have been like a guiding budget so that we know or we get guidelines on which to spend. Secondly, uh, you said that you paid, uh, you paid people who suffered, who died during pandemics. And yet, the little knowledge I have on insurance, pandemics are never covered. If it is a pandemic, they are never covered. So you say that you paid. And I think as shareholders, this being an, a general meeting, we should be hearing about things to do with dividends because the year has closed. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, and members, let's, let's remain online because here we are on the item of remuneration. The other issues I know we shall have time to discuss them and the MD if given time will answer most of them. But let's focus on this MD, those questions and then we proceed. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so I, I have split those questions into six. They probably are just two, but just so that you can provide context. Um, 
as to what you're talking about. So the first thing is around um, we are bleeding as a company. Uh, I think that's not necessarily the right word to use. We are not bleeding. Uh, we didn't perform to our expectation in the year 2021. And I have given you a snapshot of where we really want to go, where we want to go, what we must do to get there. Um, and that boils down into has the board sat down and discussed these issues. I can assure you that uh, I take a beating every day I sit with the board because the issues being raised here, the board represents you as shareholders. The same issues being raised here, they raise it with me every other day. So yes, we are aware of what issues there. We are putting our best foot forward to proceed and fix this and make this company the company you want to have in Uganda for SACO members. If audits were being carried every end of quarter, by now I would have shown you how, what our performance is as at end of quarter one of 20, end of quarter two of 20, quarter one of 2022, because we are in line. You saw me indicating a 15% growth in our premiums, somewhere on those slides. Those are factual. Uh, and we are doing very well in terms of profitability now. But things could change. These, the financial markets, all of us who know, understand how financial markets work, they're always shifting up and down, up and down. Among the, the key things that are not putting us to do what we want to expectation is our product profile. So some of the, the, the market leaders in terms of products in this industry are not with us. I'll give you examples. Number one, medical is about 25% of the industry premiums. CIC doesn't have medicals. But we are talking deeply, advanced, to ensure that we can get that to our customers in Uganda. That will definitely show up our performance, definitely. I can't give you specifics here, but there's a lot of work going on around that. Number two, asset management. Our board is very passionate about asset management. Do we do it here? No, we don't do it here. I'm just trying to dig down into what you are going to be doing to get these numbers up. Number three, pensions, and you can tie it to annuity. That is always a straightforward profit-making business. Do we do it here? No. What proportion of industry premiums is it? About another 20%. So in other words, we are playing from a point of not having advanced advantages, but that's what we're working to be able to achieve. This year, we should see very favorable performances. Number two, and I will tie that to the question around pandemics not being covered by insurance. The last two years haven't been the easiest. If you look at all the insurance companies, Look at their financials. You will see them taking a hit. Look at the banks. You will see their profitability reduced significantly. And I'm happy you have the chairman of the Uganda Bank Association here. So it was not a straight through process. It was not a, a, a straight line that we can see now we are seeing steady growth going forward. But we are also being alive to the fact that in the past, we might not have done things procedurally. If you came to our office today, you'll realize there are a lot of realignments. And those realignments continue. And some of them are being very painful around cost containment. They are being very painful. There is nobody in my office now who is very comfortable sitting in their position. Everybody is always thinking around, if I don't do the right thing, I'm going to lose my job. Because we want to start giving back to the shareholders what is due to them. And this is something that the board looked into deeply and approved and advised me as their representative to in management to go ahead and put in those very measures to ensure that we are giving back to you as the shareholders. Remember, we're talking about the 2021 financials. Now, around, is this, we paid pandemic losses, but the law doesn't allow us to pay pandemic losses. Well, last night I was having a discussion with a few uh, shareholders here um, at Serena Hotel, and something came up around. Um, some people don't pay claims. I want to throw this question back to us as shareholders. How would you feel if your spouse died of COVID-19 and then the bank came to repossess your house that was mortgaged because your spouse couldn't finish paying that loan and CIC insurance could not or rather refuse to pay uh, what they promised to pay. In this business, more than anything else, we as a company will never stop being human. 
We put, we put humanness before anything else. But most importantly, we put the cooperative spirit before anything else. We are working for the cooperators. If we need to serve them, we will serve them. Remember, a good chunk of the loans in our books are actually from, from cooperatives. A very good chunk. So as a cooperative, we might fail to pay your loans. What does that mean for you? It hits your members directly. Even those dividends you pay your members might not be really payable. Having spoken about that, when do we expect dividends to be paid? I will answer this in a very honest statement. The board has given me time to restructure this business. And I'm doing it to the best of my understanding. With the support coming from everyone else. But most importantly, I have told myself that I need to do everything I can to ensure that we get back to a dividend-paying regime. Dividends have never been paid. I cannot be able to tell you exactly when you are going to start paying it. But I will tell you that by the time we come to end of last next year, I should be able to be in a position to say we are now happy. We can pay dividends going forward. Because most important than anything else is to stabilize the business. And that we are doing. Uh, my friend uh, knows very well some of the things that we are doing. So his question is, is asking it from a point of knowledge, not from a point of not knowing. How much was paid to the directors? Now, I will answer this question in a, a way that uh, some of my colleagues in the office, sometimes they like saying that's a political statement. But I'm not a politician. I've never aspired to be one. I won't start today. What we're dealing with now is fixing the remuneration for the year 2021. That is a legal requirement. It's statutory. We've got to do it. I think the question should be around, are we paying our directors too much or too little? But to get into the details, I will tell you that everything paid to the directors is guided by the following. Number one, what best practice is in the industry. We aren't the only insurance company. Number two, what regulation requires. Every end of quarter, the regulator comes to look at our books in something they call, uh, who knows that name, uh, Nathan, it's called risk-based what? Supervision. They will come there and check just to note that you aren't paying your directors too much. In fact, when you pay your directors too little, they'll never ask you. But the moment they think you're paying your directors too much, they'll write to you and alert you that risk and you'll be asked to put mitigative measures. So I can confirm to shareholders as we speak now is that we haven't hit the ceiling in terms of what we pay our directors. We don't want to have directors who can't question me as the MD. I know you don't want that. But you can choose to have directors who will not, the MD says, let's jump. They don't even ask how much, how high. They just start jumping. You want to have directors. And our board, if you listen to them carefully, there are people coming from diverse sectors. They have sacrificed their time to be in this board. It's a lot of time. Even getting people to sit in a meeting is not, not always very easy. I believe that the sacrifice they're making is worth what they're being paid. But I reiterate, reiterate again, we are within the set guidelines. You can check through. If you look at the financials properly, you'll find all the expenditures set there, either in notes, either in notes, or as management expenses. I believe I have answered uh, all of them. Thank you. Thank you so much, MD. Uh, we have the group chief executive officer with us here, and he wants to make some clarification. And before he comes in, members like the MD have, has said, you know, we are guided by the regulator. And uh, we are fortunately, I want to thank management that whatever we are doing, we are in compliance with the, the regulations. But let the MD come in and then we, we continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much, Eric, for the clarification. Uh, you know, as a group CEO, I work a lot with Eric. I may be in Nairobi, but every day there is an email, there is a WhatsApp. Now the good thing is we have WhatsApp, isn't it? So I work a lot with Eric. So I do happen to understand a lot of our business and what is happening here in uh, Kampala. Let me start on number one, financial performance. 
I've heard somebody talk about breeding. Uh, I can give you assurance that CIC insurance, CIC Africa Uganda is not breeding. And why? Have you looked at the kind of growth we have gone through in 2021? Have you seen? We were able to grow our top line by 35%. The discussion we are having now, how do you translate that good growth to a positive bottom line? There are a number of issues there. One of them is claims. And I think our MD has articulated very well. In 2021, claim experience was slightly not very good because of COVID. That has completely been arrested. We thank God that COVID is uh, not as a problem as we, ha we had it last year. And that is, uh, even when you looked at the projections, the claim payment projections are, are lower. Uh, the other key thing that is between the growth up there and the bottom line is expenses, isn't it? One of the key expenses there is something we call provision for bad and doubtful debts. That is a requirement by the International Financial Reporting Standards Number 9. I think the auditors here have gone through that. Our company in 2021 would have been very profitable. But we had to do a provision for bad and doubtful debts. Was it 3.2 billion new shillings? That is not a problem as such. If you collect that debt, what will happen in 2022, you write back that money into the, your profit and the profit will be very good. As we are talking right now, of the 3.2 billion that we wrote as provisions, 1.8 billion has been corrected. Okay? So in, in Eric books, when the auditors come, Eric will have reversed the 3.2 billion that made us make a loss in 2021 into our bottom line. If we continue making sure we correct debts, which we are doing now, I think the team of management led by Eric here, one of the key performance indicators that they have is to correct debts, and they must correct, because you can see the impact they have on our bottom line. So once we do those two things, we correct the debts and we manage the claims, and we continue growing the way we are growing, and Eric has already told us, in 20, in, by, by 31st March 2022, We've already grown our top line by 115%. So already you can see uh, 2022 all going well, no catastrophe. Already we are into profitability, uh, cut, uh, whatever, category. So what I'm trying to assure you is that our business is not going wrong. Our business is very positive. It's only that we have had to clean some of those. Some of those debts are actually from 2018, 2019, but because of requirements, we have had to clean them. So once we do that, and I'll be saying something else that will even help us even more. Um, number two, dividends. Dividends are only paid on profits, isn't it? Now, I wanted to use this analogy later, but I'll use it now. If you are a farmer, what do you start by doing? Tilling the land, isn't it? Then you, you dig the trenches, either with a tractor or with some hoe. Then you get the seed. You put it in there. See, do you? Then after that, you manure it, or maybe you manure before you plant it. Then after some time, it germinates. Uh, of course, some birds will come and pick a few, but uh, if you guard them properly, then they'll germinate. Then you till the land, I mean, you what you weed then the harvest comes and then you get a bumper harvest sometimes you may not get that bumper harvest but you plant again that is what you are doing in CIC and I can assure you uh, delegates uh, I have a lot of experience on that having been on the other side I was a cooperator in the bank for 17 years uh, I can assure you in not long time from now CIC Africa Uganda will pay dividends. And you'll work with us this journey because there's something else we'll be doing to you in your regions.
to be able to know how we are moving as a company. But I'll say that later, not now. The last one is on directors. That has had been mentioned. We do not pay directors excessive pay. In fact, we had a meeting uh, last year to review that remuneration. There was zero increase. Why did we do that? The company is not doing extremely well from a profitable perspective. We compared with other companies. What are other companies paying? Isn't it? Number three and most important, local directors here cannot just wake up one day and say we want more money. We do it from a group perspective. Of course, ultimately they'll approve, but from a group perspective we have to say how is Uganda doing for us to change the director's remuneration. So I can also assure you there that everything is under control. It's just that you have a duty to help us give that authority to the directors to discuss that because the, the, I mean, according to the law, we cannot bring all the figures here, isn't it? Yeah, but you just give uh, the directors that capacity, but I can assure you, the, once you give them that authority, they do not misuse it. Okay? They will do the authority, they'll uh, approve whatever remuneration very, very soberly and based on competitor analysis, based on the, the law, what it is required, and all that. So I thought maybe, let me just uh, mention a, a few of those things. We are in very good place right now as a business in Uganda, but I'll, I'll briefly talk about that later when I get an opportunity to talk. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you so much, Group CEO. The two have really explained very well, and I also want to add on my voice that the company is not breeding. First of all, we are all aware that we have been into COVID year 2020, 2021. But we thank God that amid this COVID, we have performed to this tune. And again, if you are to look at the provision, like you have said, if the provision for bad debts were not, was not there, would be in a positive of two plus billion. So we'll be talking of profits. But of course, it's a requirement to provide, especially looking at the time of COVID. So members, we have... Uh, we have gotten explanations. So can I have two hands? One moving a motion and the other one seconding and then we go to the next level. Dear cooperators, whatever we are doing, we are doing it in line with the law. We are not breaking any law whatsoever. Thank you. Thanks so much, the chairperson. And by the names of Kawasingu Violet, the manager Wachakimunya Sako from Winyangao district, and I'm so humbled to be here. For sure, when we look at the economy that we are in, even to complete the year of 2021 was God's mercy. And what has come to my notes is whatever is happening on the ground is what is happening on the upper hand. Even the cooperatives, the circles, whatever is here is what happened during our AGMs. So it means it's an economical thing that all of us we are facing. We are talking about dividends. Even circles and cooperatives, they didn't declare dividends because of losses. But the business cannot stop because we are not making profits. It means we have to push on. We have to lay strategies on how we can move to another level. That's why these auditors say it can survive for the next 12 months. That's the opinion they give. So, but the fact that we can survive for the next 12 months, we really need to see how these directors can be eliminated. Because minus them, we cannot move. Minus that in motivation, they cannot lay strategies. But what is my request through the chairperson? We on the ground levels, we are not understanding some of these things. And what is talked may not be in the policy document. So we find a challenge to explain. Business is not making profit. Members are investing in their shares, they're not seeing dividends. So they lose morale to invest. But we need not to lose hope. So we have to keep on encouraging them. We promise one day, one time, we shall declare the dividends. Through that point, through the chairperson, person, we would say, let it be done the way it has been done, because it's according to the policy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, senior cooperator. So who is seconding the motion? We close this. And then uh, there is that. Those two, two, two ladies there, you can pick one.
and then we close this. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Mariam Nabuye. Nadangila Galia Wamsako. Chairman, I do second uh, the board to fix the remuneration of the auditors for the financial year 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And you see, dear cooperators, if you were so keen on the presentation of the management report, we are doing very well. Very, 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 very well. I hope by next AGM, the talk will be different. And I want to thank you. And as directors, we shall do whatever it can to make sure that we grow this company. Thank you so much. Well, let's proceed with the company secretary. Rotation of directors. Thank you, Chairman. The next agenda item is for noting is for noting the retirement by rotation of a third of the directors in accordance with the Articles of Association. So what CIC's articles provide is that at every general meeting of the shareholders, a third of the longest serving directors, or a number closest to a third, if they're not a multiple of three, shall retire from office, from the office of directorship. And that if uh, the shareholders are so willing, those same directors who are retiring uh, can be reappointed because they're eligible for reappointment to the board. So this year, the board is putting forward um, our chairman, Mr. Ivan Asimwe, who became a director in 2017, and Mr. Sebastian Okot, who became a director in 2018. So these are being proposed for retirement and then re-election as directors because the board has found that uh, their service has been commendable and wishes for them to remain as directors on the board. So we shall start with uh, our chairman, Mr. Ivan Asimwe. If we can kindly have a proposal and a seconder, or if you have questions, we can take those as well. Thank you, Secretary Thuru, that's your person. I'm Flavia Mgisa Nalongo Kijura Sako. According to whatever we have passed through so far, and the promises we have had, I request the cooperators that he let the chairperson remain and at least finish up his promises. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have someone seconding? Uh, Wilson Egesa, I strongly second. I don't only second, but I strongly second. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sebo. So we'll take it that uh, our chairman has been reappointed to the board. Yes, we can clap. Thank you very much, members. The next person is Mr. Sebastian Okot. I'm sure many of you know him. If Thank you, Mr. Okot. If we can kindly have a proposal for Mr. Okot and someone to second his reappointment to the board. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I'm called Okalo Simon, the general manager of Masako. May I propose that Okot be reappointed all those teams so that they finish their term. Thank you. Thank you very much. Someone second. I'm Penny Francis Jimmy, general manager Lord Corsaco. I stand to second the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. So Mr. Court has also been reappointed to the board. Thank you.
Thank you so much, members. Let me begin by appreciating you for reappointing me on the board. And as a senior cooperator, I know I've interacted with very many cooperators here. And like I told you, I have been in the cooperatives for 19 years. I started as the smallest person in the circle, a cashier of the circle, up to the level of a general secretary of Uganda Cooperative Alliance. So I think with that experience, cooperators, we have a lot to do together. My message is, let us stop donating our wealth. Enough is enough. Let us invest in the CIC. Let's do business with the CIC. Let's benefit all Ugandans. I want to thank you, and I want also to congratulate my comrade, Director Sebastian, who has also been reappointed. I want to thank you, shareholders. Thank you so much. So back to our agenda. Let's go to the reappointment of the auditors. Shareholders, our current auditors, PWC, or Price Waterhouse Coopers, they have been our auditors for the last three years. And as per IRA, which is Insurance Regulatory Authority, they still have one more year to go. So they are still eligible for reappointment. But for us as directors, we cannot make a decision. We only recommend. So based on their performance, as directors, we are really contented and convinced that they have done a very good job. And we recommend to the AGM that let them be reappointed to serve for the next one year. But it is the AGM that has the authority to approve. Thank you so much. So I bounce it, ba I bounce it back to the members for decision making. Thank you. There is a hand. Okay, that one. And then the manager, she's also this side. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is Benjamin Ebajo, chairperson, Soroti Teacher Sako. It's very unfortunate that uh, we do not have a list of companies of these auditors. So far, we are now experienced with only this very PWC. Because of that, why not maintain them in the city? After all, you have even recommended they have been doing good work. And if the term limit is four years and they have not gone for one, then we make them more five. I thank you so much. Chairman, he has proposed. Thank you so much. Thank you. He has proposed that we appoint PWC. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, the chairperson. According to the regulatory authority, as they have said, and the fact that we have a group of directors we have trusted, we need not to debate about the point. The point is saying we appoint, and the policy allows them to be reappointed. So I strongly agree that they be appointed for the next financial year. Thank you so much. So PWC, you have been reappointed by the shareholders for the next one year. Congratulations. So next item is the any other business and as the a requirement we are supposed to receive any other business in advance, but uh, the company secretary has whispered to me that they have not yet received any matters, any other matters for discussion. That's it. Mm. So for that matter, we don't have any other matter on table. So let us proceed. With the AGM much shareholders, thank you. I'm really so happy for your deliberations, for your coming, and everything. And we promise as directors and as management to do better so that the next financial year, when you come back, the story will be different and it will be very, very positive. So. The AGM business is closed. Let's go into speeches and then we proceed. So let me, members and shareholders, 
allow me to invite the group chief executive officer who is here with us to make his remarks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, directors and delegates, the principal guests, uh, also Chairman uh, Uganda Bankers Association, and I'm also told you in charge of over 80 investment clubs. That's a very big uh, role. Uh, Mr. Mathias uh, Katamba, Kat Katamba, yes. The chairman, CIC Africa Uganda, the group chairman and vice chairman, CIC uh, group, directors, president, delegates, cooperators, shareholders, management staff, other invited guests. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. afternoon again. To are cooperators. Is that the way you say hi here as cooperators? Anyway, I can introduce that. Now, I don't want to take a lot of time because uh, I did mention one or two things there. But I really want to thank you for gracing this occasion, coming here today, coming from different parts of uh, Uganda to be here with us. And also thank you very much, especially for those that have supported us by buying more shares. Or should I say, for those who have supported the cooperators in Uganda by buying more shares. I had a question from one of the delegates, and the question was, we are investing in CIC, we are not getting dividends. I thought I'd just talk about that briefly. And I gave the analogy of the farmer. And what we are doing right now is exactly the same thing. Um, CIC Africa Uganda came here some while ago, and when it came, it wanted to be a joint venture between cooperative movement in Kenya and cooperative movement in Uganda. Are we together? Now, all other companies who are doing insurance in this country, they have come in, registered companies at the registrar of companies, they probably have one or two big uh, shareholders, individuals, and every time they get anything in terms of a profit and they declare a dividend, where does that money go? Where? It leaves either to individuals or most of it out of the country. I know you know all the companies that are big here. I don't want to mention them. CIC came with a different agenda. I know we may not fully appreciate that agenda, and I know one of the things we have committed ourselves into this era now going forward is we want to come to where the cooperatives are. We will no longer be waiting to get you seated here after every 12 months. We want to come to the regions. Uh, we want to create visibility. We want you to understand what is this uh, issue of other companies that are multinational as opposed to cooperatives. I am a testimony. I was in a cooperative institution for 17 years. Today, for the last 15 years, that institution has paid dividends to its shareholders for 15 years in a row. That institution today is paying one shilling, one Kenya shilling, dividend per year, yet when the people bought shares, they bought it for one shilling. So that means every time you get a dividend at the end of the year, you are actually getting your investment back, but you're still keeping it. It's like going to Kasese or Jinja or Barara, buying a plot of one acre, after every year selling it, getting the money back, and still having the, the plot, isn't it? And every year you sell it, you get the money back, but you still have the property. Come the end of the next year, you sell it again, and you still have the property. I don't even know whether that is possible. It is possible with dividends. Okay? CIC Insurance Group, uh, where our group chairman, and I know he will say one or two things, is we have paid dividends for 10 years in a row 
It's only that for the last two years, we haven't paid. In 2022, I can... And the only reason we didn't pay is because we wanted to plow back some of that money so that we can grow that institution bigger, so that we can be able to give bigger dividends, isn't it? Remember that analogy of you go, you farm, you harvest two bugs, but you can decide to eat the two bugs, or you can decide I'll eat one bug, and one bug I'll put it back to the shamba, God willing, and we, I know all of us pray God, that one bug gives you 10 bugs or 20 bugs. If you eat it, you won't get to harvest anything, isn't it? So I think what we want to do, and I really want to focus, I don't want to talk about the bigger CIC, because we are in Uganda. The bigger CIC is doing a lot. We want to do that a lot here in Uganda. And we want to change this business, grow it significantly, make sure that the shareholders in Uganda are getting that thing we are calling dividend. But how do we do that? We want to create visibility. How do we create visibility? By coming to every region, having what we call workshops. Um, and I know um, we are not doing this at the moment, but maybe we can start every six months. We come to the region within the area of Barara. We call all the cooperators. We tell them this is how we have performed. This is what we are doing. This is what we are not doing very well. This is what we are doing very well. You ask us questions, you get satisfied, but at the end of the day, you do one thing also. You invest more because you know and you will have understood what this will mean for you, for your children, for your cousins, you know, for your neighbors, because it will be a big thing. We have segmented. We want to segment cooperatives. There are those that are big. There are those that are medium. There are those that are small. There are those that are emerging. All of them have different needs. Okay? So we want to do that. And I know Eric has already started that planning of making a change. You know, uh, allow me to say this with all humility. Uh, the white man said, someone who repeats the same thing over and over again and expects different results. What do they call him? What does the Englishman call him? Tunajua? Do we know? Naive. In fact, the Englishman says either you are mad or you are a fool. I think as CIC, we want to remove that tag as us. We want to try and do different things. And I think what we have come to realize, and I know I was sitting with a director here, and they were saying, you see, and I think one director really put it very clearly there. We can know in CIC up here in uh, Kampala. But unless we get that information to the local cooperative, be it in wherever, in Arua, in Barara, in Jija, in Kasese, unless you get that information known by my brother here or my sister there, we are not going to be doing anything. But I think we are ready to change the game. We want to come down there. We want to come and talk about financial literacy. Why should you invest in CIC? What are the products that can benefit you? I think Eric talked about a number of products. How often should we meet with you? So that what we want to say, and this is what we are doing elsewhere, we want to have the pulse of the cooperator. And I think once we do that, you will see the benefit. So I think that's my commitment. We have many things we are doing. We have transformations. I don't want to repeat them. I just want to say that. Growth in business, very important. Uh, the chairman said something here. Imagine if you start a shop, OK? In fact, imagine if you start a, a shop somewhere. And uh, every time, every morning, you want to go buy bread. Instead of going to buy it to, from your shop, you go to the neighbor's shop. OK? What happens? What happens? Your business will die, and you're the one killing it. CIC is your business. And I know we may not fully appreciate that, but of course there are those who are already shareholders. 
Ultimately, we would like cooperative movement in Uganda to own CIC Africa Uganda 51%, and the group only 49%. That was the original idea. It has not been achieved. We would like to achieve it. Who will help us, who will help us achieve it? It is you sitting here. And the others, you will go tell the story. But I have already given you a demonstration. I have been in Cobank for 17 years as their group finance and strategy director. I saw us start a dividend of 10 cents. By the time I left, we were paying a shilling. I'm now in CIC. We have paid dividends for 10 years. The last two years we didn't pay. I can assure you from next year, this year, end of this year, we will pay dividends. So I, I, I'm, I'm not telling something which is here, see. You know, I'm already a converted person. We are going into the area of microinsurance. Microinsurance will be a big business here for you because you are the microinsurers. I mean, you're the micro clients. So again, a very, you know, uh, a very good way to continue doing business. I have focused only on the circles because here we are mainly circles. But we are also doing that business with other agents, with bank assurance, with, uh, you know. And Eric has said there are a number of products we have not introduced in the market. We are in the process of introducing them based on the profitability that we are going to see. So thank you very much. I thought I'd just say that from the depth of my heart that uh, we need to do a change. We will come to you. Uh, I don't want to commit that, but you will you'll see us first as the senior managers and directors of this company coming to the regions ourselves as we are supported by our local chairman. We can also, so that we can give you what some of the things we are doing and some of the things you can do to completely change this company and it benefits you from a service perspective, from a dividend perspective, and that will be very good. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Group CEO. Good afternoon, cooperators. It looks, it looks we need really to, we need to stand up and stretch a bit, because cooperators are a bit tired. Let's stretch a bit, really. This is, this is our home, so be free. Even if you want to stretch up to where, there are no, there are no boundaries. Thank you so much. So you can uh, resume your seats. So cooperators, the best moment for me is when I am interacting with the fellow cooperators. So I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly gratified to be here to interact with the cooperators during the CIC AGM. I'm really very happy. To our chief guest. Okay, okay. To our chief guest, who is here with us, a senior banker and a friend, uh, the group chair. You know, for us cooperators in this country, we have removed that title from him and we call him Archbishop for Cooperatives. <laughs> if we want, we can confirm that. Once the shareholders confirm, we will change the name. Because we have the authority, isn't it? So we call him, you hear him. The man preaches cooperatives and he says his DNA, 99.9, .9 is cooperatives. For me, I talk of 19 years, it talks of 40 years. You see? So, cooperators, we really have a lot to learn from such seniors. My senior, I will take this in a special way. I want to thank you, and I want to welcome you to Uganda. Our group CEO, who is here, our 
directors kindly stand up again for recognition thank you so much this is a team that has turned around CIC when some people were talking of dividends my friends for the years I was in the circle like eight years I'm happy that we are seniors here together with my sister here you know when we are talking with experience seven years eight years we had never given out dividends because we cannot expect to harvest maize when you are still clearing the ground you need a long term investment why these bazunguza are moving faster for them they don't expect dividends in less than 50 years but for us before you even plant tomorrow you go there to check whether the seeds have germinated before you plant you want to see whether the seeds have the wanyankole call it tomorrow you don't become patient so i'm very happy that our directors including myself have really done it we have turned around this company just from 2015 to 2022 we are here talking of going to the profit zone i want to thank our for the legal advice this 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 we have moved this far because of our lawyers who are always guiding us to make sure that we follow the right direction now the shareholders we want to thank you so much for investing in CIC <laughs> and please become our ambassadors I am going to organize, I will have a TV program, I think next week. And I want to be clear to Ugandans. Uganda is the part of Africa. Africa is a continent gifted by nature. But why do we have poor people in Africa? Why? Have you ever asked yourself? God gave us everything. If we were God, assume if you were God seated in heaven and you see an African crying for you because of hunger, when you gave him better soils, two seasons, everything is okay, you can even drop a seed in the bush and tomorrow you harvest. But this person is crying that I'm poor. What do you do if you were God? Let us ask ourselves such questions. Why are we beggars instead of being donors? You go outside and see what is happening. Some countries are rocky that you cannot even plant a seed. They came and took our soil from Kabare here in Kabaraga. They took it on a plane and went to, to grow. And they are now giving us aid. And we are here struggling. The problem is here. The mind. You can imagine you're a circle manager. Uh, this is the message I want you to take. I don't want to read the speech. If you're a circle manager, surely, and you are like I was a general manager for Uchiga for eight years, these are poor people in the Kabale district. But you get their money, you pick it, take it to an insurance company where you don't have a stake, 
where you can never attend such an AGM and at least interact with your cooperators and ask questions. So it means that you are making your people poorer and it is a systematic move to make Africa poor and poor. So we are here mobilizing resources for those guys who are seated on the other side on their computers, milking the poor people of Kamari, mobilize the money, the money leaves the country, we remain poor. We are poor because we are poor. And the word poor is very simple, passing on opportunities repeatedly. God gave you the opportunities, but you are passing them to who? To the exploiters. Dear cooperators, I think we need to come back. And since we have our Archbishop here, I request that in case you are here and you have not bought shares in the CIC, confess your sins today so that you can go to heaven. Because it will be a sin for you to donate money. So members, I really want to thank you. Over the last six years, our business has tremendously grown. And we are looking at the projections for this year, which are been positives. So members, we want to thank you as management for your support. The financial year under review was challenging. This is the time when we had COVID. COVID did not only affect CIC, but the entire economy and the entire world. In fact, I want to thank management and directors that amidst COVID-19, we remained afloat. We want to thank you so much. <laughs> Members were aware that some companies closed the business and ran away. Who are we to be here talking after COVID-19? By the way, we have not even recovered. Much as we are removing our masks, we are not safe. But at least God will help us. So we want to thank you for the good work that we have done amid this, these challenges. Now you have COVID-19, before you finish it, flood is coming. Before you finish floods, Russia versus Ukraine. Now, so we are having a lot of challenges. But as CIC, we promise you as shareholders that we shall do our best to make sure that we progress as a company. In addition to the pandemics, our economy was also hit by both drought and flooding at different times. And our commitment and contribution to the financial security and reconstruction of the Ugandan economy over the years to both individuals and corporates is unwavering and is clearly evidenced through our claims settlement. You saw when the MD was presenting we are settling claims immediately. Why? Because we are owned by you, the cooperators. That notwithstanding, I'm happy to report to you, our dear delegates, that our transformational journey that began in the second half of 2021 is well on track, and it is with that in mind that I now take the pleasure to introduce the following new appointments to the board of directors, in compliance with the new regulations set out by the regulator. So like we said, we are guided by our regulator and we have these new appointments and I wish to introduce them because they were not here during the last AGM. So allow me to introduce them to you so that you know them. We have Mr. George Inhoro, who is here with us. He has moved out a bit, yeah, but he's around. We have Mr. Dan Badebe. Thank you so much. Mr. Douglas Ndaura. Engineer, is engineer Douglas Ndaura. We have Mr. James Njue Njiru. And Mr. James is the vice chairman of CIC Group. So he's a very big person. <laughs> Madam Josephine Nabuyongo. <laughs> she's a very senior cooperator. Yesterday we were talking and she tells me, me I'm 19 for her, she's 20 years. 
<laughs> Very senior cooperator. Most of you know her. She had retired, but she came back, so she is a new director. Mr. Francis Ogwang is here with us, a senior banker and a Rotarian. Thank you, I know. <laughs> Madam Christine Kawasima, she is here with us. Thank you. Mr. Derek Nkaja. I think CPS, you know him. He is the CEO of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda. So we see, you can see the cream, the cream of the people that we have on CIC. So you can't go wrong when you have the head of all accountants in the whole country, including myself. He's my boss. Thank you. Then, Mrs. Diana Narukenya, a very good marketer. When she starts talking marketing, you know CIC will, will go to the skies in the next one hour. Mr. Joseph Areu, a very senior cooperator, senior civil servant. And then Dr. Nelson Kunia, Archbishop. <laughs> so he is the group chairman. So he's in charge of CIC across the region. And before I forget members, I want to request you to join me to thank the Kenyan team and I tell you why. <laughs> the reason is simple. When we are looking at starting an insurance company in this country, we had a meeting, UCA and Ukusku, and we started scratching, how do we start an insurance company? Because we remember it used to be there, senior cooperators who are here, we used to have an insurance company, you know, you know the, the cooperative movement in this country was ahead of Kenya. But of course, you know what happened. Kenya has not has had the war for us, you know what we have gone through. So, as we are trying to move left and right, of course we didn't have resources. You even remember we organized the meetings. In UCA AGMs, it was almost every year, it was a song. How do we start an insurance company? How do we stop donating our money? Like we are now talking about the cooperative bank. So, we engaged our friends in Kenya. You know cooperatives, we are guided by the sixth principle. We have seven cooperative principles developed in 1966 under Vienna Congress. So the sixth principle is, what is it? Cooperators, you tell me, senior cooperators. Cooperation among cooperatives. So using that principle, we had meetings with our friends in Kenya. We are the same people. You know, these guys were very funny. You sit in Berlin and agree to divide Africans. Who gives you the authority? So we are the same people. The only difference is that the colonials created the line between Uganda and what? And the Kenya. And they had the reason. Divide and, and rule. But we are the same people. So in our meetings, they said, we are the same people. We are brothers and sisters. Ugandans, we are ready to help you. And here we are with the CIC Africa, Uganda. Our brothers from Kenya, led by our Archbishop, kindly convey our regards, our profound regards, to the people of Kenya for accepting to support Ugandans in starting an insurance company. So members, CIC Insurance Group offered 724,900 shares for subscription to the Ugandan cooperatives to acquire a stake in the company and participate in its future growth as owners. While the uptake hasn't met the target as end of financial year, under review, I'm humbled to report to you that cooperatives are beginning to respond. And please take this message, let all cooperatives respond. I'm happy when we're in Kasese, because we have opened up a branch in Kasese, 
very many cooperatives bought shares and they have done business with us. We also have an office in Mbale, we have an agency office in Jinja, and here in Kampara we have very many operational centers. So the uptake has been low, but fortunately people have started to realize that actually we can do something better. As I conclude, I want to thank the shareholders. Thank you so much for investing in CIC and for doing business with the CIC. I want to thank the government of the Republic of Uganda for creating an enabling environment for us to operate. I in, a, in a special way, I want to thank the Minister of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. We are expecting the minister, but they are still tied up in meetings. As you know, government business, there is now parish development model and other businesses. We had a visitor, the president of Mozambique. I don't know whether he has left. So because of those, those busy schedules, the minister still wants to come, but in case he finds we are finished, I will have to take time and brief him. But he's supposed to be with us here. So I want to thank the ministry for their support. Had it not been the ministry, wouldn't have succeeded. I also want to thank our State Minister for Cooperatives, Honorable Gume Ngoni Frederick, who has been very supportive. He was supposed to be with us today also. All the ministers had, had committed themselves to be with us here, but they are very busy. I have just talked to the, to the personal assistant for Honorable Mwebisa, and he tells me Honorable is still in the meeting, but he was requesting if the moment we haven't finished, he will be joining us. But we shall wait for him. I want to thank the Commissioner for Cooperatives, Mr. Wario Warije. He's supposed to be with us here because he's a director, but he's also tied up. I've just talked to him that he's, in a, he's, prepare, he's preparing something, he's in a meeting. But I saw his representative here, someone from the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. What is he? He is outside. Yeah, he has a representative here. I had interacted with him. So I want to thank the ministry in totality for their support. I want to thank our chief guest here with us, Mr. Matthias Katamba, who is the chairman, but I'm sorry we never use president because you have been a president of Amphio before. He was a president for AMFU, which is the Association of Microfinance Institutions of Uganda, and all circles we are falling there. So he has been our president, and is a Rotarian. So I want to thank you so much for your support. I want to tell you members, banks have given us immense support, and we are here because they are there. I want to thank you and kindly convey our regards as CIC, board, shareholders, and management for the support. And I kindly request you that let all banks come on board. Because cooperators, and we the people keeping money in, in the banks, we are keeping money in the banks. In the time when I was keeping around 1.7 billion in a commercial bank, and the manager came, called me and asked me, you mean circles are strong like this? That for me, I saw the circle is a village organization. I didn't know. I told him, you man, the circle is even bigger than a bank. And indeed, you know circles which are even bigger than banks, like Wazalendu. It's a very big circle. So I want to thank you and kindly mobilize for us that all banks give us business because we are the very people giving them business. Thank you so much. I also want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you so much. And let us also thank our almighty God who has been there for us, especially during COVID. We are still healthy. We are still moving. And we pray that he continues to support us and give us a gift of life. Thank you so much, members. You will allow me
in a special way, invite our Archbishop. Our Archbishop, you know, I'm supposed to be a bishop if I'm to invite an Archbishop. So I don't know how the protocol will be handled, <laughs> but kindly let me uh, invite our group chair, the senior cooperator, to greet the cooperators who are here, and don't forget to preach them the gospel of cooperation. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, uh, fellow cooperators. Good afternoon. God is good. And all the time. Yeah, uh, our, our chief guest and my brother who I have met uh, today and we have already struck a very strong rapport. Uh, that But um, like I said, my DNA is cooperatives. But I know first and foremost I take the DNA of God as a creation of Him. And the reason I say this is because, uh, uh, you know, it's very easy to see somebody standing in front of you. And you just imagine because they look well dressed, they look uh, well fed. Uh, you just imagine that they have been that way always. I want to disabuse you of that notion today because when you see some of us, if you were to rewind our history, you would see a very poor person, not wearing a suit like this, but only one shirt without shorts because of the level of poverty like that I came from. By courtesy of cooperatives, because my late father and my mother who were still there, they were members of a Deira and Pyretram cooperative somewhere in Mount Kenya. I come from the lower side that does not grow coffee or tea, so we derive our income from, from Pyretram and uh, Deira farming. They were members of that cooperative. If it were not for that, believe you me, I would not be standing before you here if it was not through the empowering nature of a cooperative that made it possible for my school fees to be paid even amidst that poverty and the grace of God. I wouldn't be here. That is why I'm so passionate about cooperatives because I know where the cooperative picked me from. And I know it can transform the lives of all of us, including all of us that are seated here. And I know you have that testimony as cooperative uh, members and even uh, uh, leaders. And I just, we've been, I've been listening to the issues that you have been raising. And I can associate myself with your sentiments, with your feelings. And I want to tell you that we feel you. We feel you as a board members of this uh, uh, very worthy institution. We feel you even as senior management and staff of corporate uh, CIC Africa Uganda and the subsidiaries. And I tell you that we are in a new era. The past is good 
as a lesson, but we cannot remain with our eyes fixed in the past. We must focus our eyes in the future because that is where the success lies. And I want to tell you without fear of contradiction, with this compliment of board members that you have seen here, these men and women, people of integrity and high sense of commitment and devotion, I just want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that like the Americans say, you ain't seen nothing yet. And watch this space. And I'm not making a political statement. I'm making a statement that is backed by the reasoning and the strategies that we are putting in place to make sure that we turn around this business. For your information, seven years for an insurance company is a very short time in the life of an insurance company. The big companies you see here like Jubilee, they have been in existence for a hundred years. And I can tell you they are still going through challenges because of the market conditions. We are going through the same challenges because of market conditions in Kenya. But we have managed to make uh, a difference because of commitment from such men and women and also the membership of cooperatives at large. So I want to tell you all is not lost. Whatever we have gone through is what a new institution goes through. You have to have a long-term perspective, like the chair has said, and like the group CEO said. We pl plant now, and we are surely going to reap uh, abundantly uh, in, uh, in the future. Just want to give you hope because when I joined the uh, CIC in 1998, as chief of uh, uh, business and uh, strategy, CIA, at that time it was called uh, CIS, Cooperative Insurance Services. And it was the smallest in the insurance industry. My counterpart, the cooperative bank, the current uh, group CEO also joined the bank almost at the same time. In fact, he was a few months older than me. And we also became CEOs at the same time. He was a few months older than me, as I also became CEO of CIC. And I want to tell you, those institutions, they had even been condemned. In fact, CIS was to be sold. The cooperative bank, people had given up. But there came men and women of commitment and a vision because we believe in the power of transformation. We believe in the power of cooperation that with the cooperatives you can't go wrong. This is where the future lies. Even for the world, partnerships coming together even for big organizations. They are coming together like cooperatives, and some of them are very big multinationals. Why? Because in partnership, there is greater strength, and the weaknesses are reduced with the power of partnership. That is why we came here in Uganda to partner with your good selves, because we want to promote a mutual benefit, not benefit of coming to own 100% like uh, the private companies do. So we are guided by the value of solidarity and the principle of cooperation among us. Cooperatives. To cut the long story short, within a few years by mobilizing the cooperative members and delegates like yourselves. We went to the ground, we rolled up our sleeves, we went to the trenches. It did not matter whether one was a board member, whether one was a staff, we were there in the field like what the group CEO has said and what uh, the managing director has said. By the time I was retiring in February 2015, CIC was the third largest insurance group, not only in Kenya and in East Africa, but the leading cooperative insurer in the continent of Africa. 
a cooperative bank is now the third largest in terms of asset in the Kenyan market and also the leading cooperative bank not only in Africa but in the developing world. <laughs> so it can be done, ladies and gentlemen, it can be done. And it is going to be done because we know where we are going. So you may not have received the dividends because even expenses of growing a business, when it is growing fast, you cannot make profit immediately. But I want to assure you, what is being planted today by way of strategies and planning that is serious, relationship building and management that is serious, that recognizes that you can't do business without strong partnerships and relationships. And that's why I'm so happy that my brother from the Development Finance Company of Uganda is partnering with us. And in fact, he's telling uh, me he is rearing to see how much they can be able to do. Because they are a public institution. Cooperatives are private but public because we are organizations of the people, by the people, and for the people. So we are united together through our mission. Our mission is to serve our people and lift them from poverty and create wealth so that we can also be proud. We do not uh, feel like people who don't have dignity because Africa, you know, we have the dubious distinction of being considered the poorest. Yet we have abundant resources, including people themselves. So we are focused on people, growing cooperatives. You have heard, we shall come where you are. Things have turned upside down. It is not you who will be coming to us. We will be coming to your abode where you are. And I can tell you, for sure, things are going to turn around. And that's why I can tell you without uh, fear of contradiction that watch this space. You ain't seen nothing yet. Today, I don't want to say much because we have a guest of honor and I don't want to steal the thunder from him. We will be coming here in the month of June and we are going to go around for one week. We knew three, four days are not enough because we want to engage with your good selves where we are so that we can determine the destiny of this institution so that CIC Africa Uganda, in a few years to come, it will be the top insurer in Uganda. <laughs> Wouldn't you be proud of having an indigenous institution being the top in the Ugandan market? Wouldn't you? Who said that multinationals should come from out there and come and dominate us? Surely, we are sitting on gold that continues to be mined by outsiders. So we are donating to their prosperity while we are subtracting from our prosperity. Thank you very much for all of you that are here today. Thank you all of you that are patronizing this organization, even in its humble beginnings. Because the humble beginnings make for that great success there in the future. That's why the Bible tells us never to look down on the humble beginnings. Because like it is said, you know, be faithful with the little, and more shall be added unto, unto you. That is also a biblical principle, like that one of planting. And surely, we shall reap as cooperators. So I'm so proud that uh, we are walking this journey together. There are quite a number of you that are really supporting us in business, even at this time. They are not looking at the history, that there was a CIS in Uganda that collapsed. 
When I was coming and we were forming this, people were reminding me of that. I told them, let us not live in the past. There are many private companies that have collapsed, but nobody talks about them. But people are keen to talk about cooperatives because they like suppressing them. Because they know they are a threat. When they become strong, they are a threat. So, brethren, I just want to assure you that you can bank on us sooner than later. You will be forming a beeline and laughing all the way to the bank to cash that uh, dividend check. But we must also be conscious and understand the nature of our business. That uh, insurance is a long-term business in terms of perspective. It's unlike banks. Insurance, you know, is a business of risks. So we will be taking your risks as cooperators, and we want to engage with you so that you have no reason whatsoever to go to another underwriter that is not associated with you. They will make profit and take it elsewhere, and you will never even attend their AGM. Neither will they ever come to attend your board meeting. Amen? So thank you, and the Lord bless you, cooperators of Uganda. And I know, and I have no doubt in my mind, like I have said, with these men and women, this organization will be an organization that you shall all be proud of. And indeed, it will be a cooperative organization that uh, will have a profile even within our continent that uh, we will not and we will no longer be operating in the background. With those few remarks, I beg to uh, sit and uh, ask, uh, maybe I ask my colleague, the vice chair, to greet you. Uh, he is a cooperator from uh, the SACO movement, and I know there are many from the SACO movement here. My brother, come and uh, say hi to your people. Yes. I'll say when I'm here. Amen? Amen. When my chairman has spoken, I'm done. <laughs> Let me take it back to the chair. <laughs> thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Cooperators, I want to move a motion that will confirm him an archbishop. Am I seconded? Am I seconded? So, sir, now next time if I say archbishop, you have been confirmed by the members. Isn't it? Yeah. And it's not by mistake that we have the same height. <laughs> putting on glasses. So if you are an archbishop, may I may, may be a, a lay reader? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, group chair. Thank you so much, vice. Allow me, members, to recognize our district commercial officers who are here with us. Some are principal commercial officers, others are municipal commercial officers. Kindly stand up for recognition. Thank you so much. Our chief guest, these people have done a wonderful job in mobilizing cooperatives to invest in CIC and to do business with the CIC. We want to thank you so much and don't get tired, continue and continue. The group chair has mentioned everything. When the bishop has talked, I have nothing else to add. I also want to recognize Director George Inihoro. He had moved out, sorry, but he has come back. He's among the new directors. Thank you so much. And is a seasoned cooperator, a senior public servant. Someone from the ministry, has he come back? And anyway, maybe he's still out. So members, I want to thank you so, so, so much. And I'm happy to tell you that we have finished on time. It is one. We didn't want to prolong the meeting. I want to thank you so much for your contributions for everything that you have done to make sure that this AGM becomes a success. 
Thank you so much. Now, to the chief guest, I may not have really the powers to officially welcome you to the floor, but I request a fellow Rotarian, a senior banker, a seasoned cooperator, Mr. Francis Ogwang. He will be the one to come here. To do what? Uh -uh. There is no coup here. <laughs> so Mr. Francis Ogwang, kindly come, give some few remarks as a senior banker. I know why I'm doing this, because he's a CEO of a very big bank, the East African Development Bank, and he works closely with the president. So that's why I want to take this opportunity to invite him to give some remarks and also invite our chief guest. Members, thank you so much. May God bless you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, mine is a very simple task to invite our chief guests uh, this afternoon to please address uh, the very distinguished delegates that we have here uh, this afternoon. Uh, by way of a very brief introduction, uh, Mr. Matthias Katamba is currently the managing director of uh, DFCU Bank in Uganda that we all know very well. Matthias, we're honored to be with you this afternoon. Uh, prior to assuming his current role, he was a managing director for Housing Finance Bank of Uganda that you know very well. And uh, prior to Housing Finance Bank, he was the managing director of a Finance Trust Bank that we all know very well. And uh, he, is, uh, he is recognized for having transformed that institution into the current commercial bank status that it has now. And uh, prior to Finance Trust Bank, he worked with uh, Pride Microfinance and was responsible again for the transformation that we see in that institution today. And of course, he has held uh, various senior roles in, uh, in banking. And I would like to add that, of course, he's uh, the chairman of uh, the Uganda Bankers Association. The Uganda Bankers Association is like uh, the Uganda Insurance Association. It brings together all uh, regulated and licensed banks in Uganda together. So, so he is a person of repute. He is a person of exceptional performance. He is a person of many accolades. I mean, he has won very many accolades to his name, and uh, that in the interest of time, I will not go into for now. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Mr. Matthias Katamba to address you this afternoon. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you very much, uh, Francis. <clears throat> uh, maybe what I'll do is just uh, ask all of you to remain upstanding and uh, give a big round of applause to the group chairman. Uh, you may be seated, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, when I was invited uh, to come here, uh, it was clear that I was not the, the chief guest. I was, uh, I was to attend the event uh, as a guest. Um, but uh, I knew it was a meeting, like all corporate meetings we attend, uh, AGMs. But there's something happening here. And all of you, and I really hope that when you come next time for the AGM, you, you bring somebody else along, maybe another circle, another cooperative, uh, because there's something happening. There's a movement. You see, transformation does not happen by chance. 
it is because he kept referring to men and women. But I was seeing a man on a mission. He has nothing to really prove. He has done it uh, in his life. He is retired, been called back to be a chair. And there is a movement happening uh, in Uganda. And he's leading uh, that movement as group chairman. And the group chairman comes to attend the AGM. And he comes with the group CEO. And you have the chairman for, uh, for Africa, Uganda. And you have uh, the CEO who's been there to handle the turnaround. And you have the new team that has joined to drive the transformation. I think, cooperators, you need to give yourselves a huge round of applause. <laughs> I know a thing or two about companies and how they turn around and how complex it is. But you know, turning around an industry or an area that has almost come to a halt at some point. That is the story uh, of cooperatives. And it is not easy that you're all part of this and you now have this revival uh, from the financial side uh, of the cooperatives through an insurance uh, company, through a principle that exists uh, you know, in your memoirs, this sixth principle. It is simply amazing. So Chairman uh, Africa and your team also, Thank you very much for the work that you're doing. I also want you to give another special round of applause to the chairman. And I'll tell you why. Because the chairman uh, was, was careful. He, he knew it was lunchtime, and so he gave me a pre-announcement by doing the closing remarks and reminding you that we have finished on time. <laughs> so I will be brief. <clears throat> so I don't stand between you uh, and lunch. So first, I'll share with you a little bit about my own personal story and how it is connected to cooperatives following from the group chairman's example. Then I'll tell you a little bit about uh, DFCU, uh, its ethos, and how it connects to cooperatives. And then I'll tell you about the Bankers Association uh, that my brother has spoken about and, and the role of partnerships. Then I will share a few short messages of what I think can be useful to all of you. Uh, as leaders. If that's agreeable, right, then I'll proceed. So uh, in the small town where I grew up, uh, there was something that was synonymous with our town. It was called Wamala Growers Cooperative Union. When you drove into our town, there was brown. You would see brown in the sky, right? And that brown was the... Uh, uh, the dust from the coffee husks that would belch out of the tall towers that stood in the middle of the town. That town, anything you planted grew because the process of fertilization of the soil happened throughout the year, right? And when you would till whatever you planted, anything would grow. Going to my local nursery school, everywhere you'd pass there was a store. And there would be men riding bicycles to the store and then weighing scales, and they would write in a book. Once a month, people moved to those stores for cheats, and there would be queues outside Cooperative Bank and Uganda Commercial Bank for people collecting money. That is how the cooperative worked in my town. Everybody who was everybody was connected to the cooperative. The town thrived. On Sunday, we would go to church. There is a massive cathedral where I come from, because there is uh, uh, one of the saints, Saint Noah Mawagali, was killed uh, from there. One of the Uganda martyrs. Since soon we'll have uh, a celebration of the Uganda martyrs on June 3rd. The story of Noah Mawagali is long. Anyway, he was tied up for his conviction for the dogs to eat him up, right? But when you go to church, you would look at the families as they came on foot or bicycles, cars were very few. They were dressed in new clothes for Sunday, not second hand. They were new. There were tailors in my town that made trousers and skirts and all sorts of things. And they would ask you, will you put on woozy bidi, zemu, depending on the quality of the amount and the amount of money that you had. But you would buy, you would have a draper make for you a custom fit. That was the aura in my town. Because there was money, 
flowing in that town from the cooperatives. After church, you would go back home on Sunday for lunch because lunch would have remained cooking while you went to church. And after lunch, you would go back to the parish hall for entertainment, theater. There would be groups like the Equator Entertainers group, all sorts of groups, they would come. They would sing, there would be plays and acts, and you would pay to come in, and it was not free. Popcorn would be served as you went around, and it was for paying. I'm painting for you a rural setting of what happens actually in the developed world, in a place where there's money, people go to theater, they go to cinema, they have free time, they dress well, they eat well, they have employment, things flow. That was the power of the cooperatives. And so as we look to the future, it's okay to have nostalgia about what worked well. Because that should encourage us into the future. We should move into that future with boldness. We should forget whatever is said about the past. And that is why I said the group chairman standing here, in only a way that he can, an accomplished speaker, has painted a picture of what we need to be doing, why we need to be excited, why we should look forward to these AGMs, and why you should go and tell a friend in another circle, right? When we met uh, with the Africa chair, uh, he was uh, the CEO of Ruchiga Sako, right? And uh, I used to enjoy these AGMs. in the developing world, right? Best in the region. Can you imagine if we have something best in something originating from what you are doing? Are you with me? Yeah. Am I eating up your lunchtime? Okay. So I'll tell you a bit about DFC now <clears throat> and why I think that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, crucial. And I have spoken uh, to the CEO, uh, uh, Eric, that after here we need to engage a little bit more and I will have my team along, and you can come, and then we can map out together a long-term journey. <laughs> because this, I'll tell you, DFCU started uh, two years just after independence. The cooperatives were thriving at that time, right? As the British were leaving, they had grand plans, right? Uh, so there was a national hospital, right? Mulago Hospital. If you go to Mulago today, and you walk in the hallways, it doesn't feel very different from uh, an NHS hospital somewhere in England, right? The wide corridors, the big theaters, the setup, all this. Nairobi Hospital as well, uh, I think Kenyatta, Kenyatta Hospital, not different. They also left a commercial bank, 
these cooperatives, uh, then they also left a development finance institution. The role of a development finance institution was to provide long-term financing. What the banks could not do short-term, they could take a gamble on transformational local businesses. Businesses that are local, that have the capacity to create employment, the capacity to create scale, to grow. Sometimes those businesses didn't have the capacity uh, to borrow the kind of sums they needed to. And so that development finance company could actually even take a stake, an equity stake uh, in the business to share the risk, right? Uh, but also enable, enable the business to scale. Long story, that institution survived all the years, uh, the turmoil and everything. And then uh, later, uh, in the 2000s, um, you know, bought uh, a, a banking license uh, and then went into uh, banking. And that business, that development finance business, was later folded into its corporate business, but went on to build a formidable retail network with 57 branches across the country. Now, those branches across the country are in the communities where you are, right? So the company continued doing the uh, corporate type a large commercial business, but also has a deep, deep sense of being in the retail space. Uh, and in the retail space, following from that development uh, mindset, the circles and cooperatives are natural partners, right? And so when you hear about DFC, you will hear about investment clubs, you'll hear about circles. I will tell you, we have in excess of 15,000 circles, right? Uh, as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as, as partners. 550,000 members uh, of circles, right? Uh, uh, if you think through it. So we have a system, for example, we've invested uh, in a technology that circles uh, can use, and 5,300 circles use that investment club uh, system of DFCU Bank technology uh, to run the financial affairs uh, uh, of their circle at no cost, right? We participate wherever there is possibility for coming together. So it's on key programs that will support circles. We've been there. In Yoga, we are front runners on the parish development model. We've been in NUSAF, uh, Women Enterprise Fund, DRIP, Youth Livelihood Fund, etc. And now we are in the process of putting together a series of partnerships where we can raise the kind of funding that can bring down uh, the rate uh, to, uh, that we will lend to, uh, to circles and cooperatives. Of course, to so that you can also uh, get some leverage uh, into your businesses. Because what we are looking for uh, is to be able to drive uh, a scale. So with CIC, there are many things uh, that we can do. We can be principal partners. We can, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We'll talk through those things with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Eric. Chairman, I missed the protocol, but the reason why I missed the protocol is because I was blown away by your, your presentation, right? <laughs> so CIC presents a very unique model that is a combination of insurance and cooperatives. It follows on the back uh, of a proven mechanism that has worked and is linked back uh, to the growth of the business in Uganda through a principle that lies within the principles of cooperatives. The corporate movement is typically a very powerful framework for driving social economic transformation. And uh, so at DFCU, the vision of the bank is transforming lives and businesses through innovative solutions and empowered people. Everything that I've tried to say to you is wrapped in that, right? Transforming lives and businesses through innovation and empowerment of people. So if you think about it, that empowerment is what you get by being uh, in a platform like this one with CIC, but the growth and transformation uh, of your own lives, those of the members, those of the communities, and the business which you run because a cooperative, uh, you can look at it uh, in that way, even if it's not a commercial business, is something which is central uh, to what, what we think. And going back again to the background that I gave you about the entity, growing stakeholder value while playing a key role in transforming the economy and improving the well-being of people. So you see, it is not just a commercial motive, but transforming and improving the well-being of people and connecting that to development uh, of the economy. That's why we all win together. That's why the movement in which you are is such a crucial uh, 
movement when it comes for us uh, doing uh, partnerships uh, for growth. Now, I do not have to tell you a lot about uh, what insurance does in terms of mitigating risks. I think that uh, the kind of risks that we have gone through uh, in the recent uh, past uh, paint a picture uh, of what uh, it, it takes to mitigate risk and what it can lead to if you don't. And I, don't, I know we don't do health here, but I can paint for you a picture which you can almost call a live picture. So a wealthy man typically in Uganda owns uh, what? Owns? Owns what? Malls. Malls. Malls are buildings. Anything else? Land. What else? Sorry? Animals. Cattle. What else? So I want to paint for you a picture. After March 2020, wealthy man owns a mall. Mall may have 2,000 tenants has lots of land, square miles of land. Thousands of cattle, right? Animals, what else? Maybe owns a school, you dream, right? Owns a school. They also have forest. They have a forest and they have hotels. March 2020. Six months into that period, the mall is closed for six months. All those tenants are home. There is no transportation of cattle to Kampala. The abattoir is even maybe closed or operating at low capacity. Nobody is buying land, right? You can't even talk of forests at that time. You can't even get there. The school kids are at school, at home. Hotels are closed. And that person is facing a medical emergency. People are doing meetings to raise money. Are you aware? Raising what? For such a man or woman doing meetings to raise money. Now, for our friends from Kenya, uh, uh, the story is a little bit sad because raising money to get a ticket to fly him to, right? To Nairobi, it's an emergency at the time, right? Hmm? Amref, very busy at that time dealing with their pre-insured. Uh, uh. So now imagine insurance. That a man like that, whatever the premium would have been, is negligible, right? But simply because it's not there, life is on the, on the line. And I know we don't do medical, but I'm just using it as an example. So if you go out there and speak to fellow cooperators, as many as you can, right? Uh, circles as well and rally them to come and take up shareholding in CIC. So the next time there's an AGM, an AGM for CIC should not be here. It should be Nambale. So if you are listening to the chairman and are talking transformation, I mean, if you're sold, you'd be clapping. Right? <laughs> and, and, and I understand I'm encroaching on lunch, so I should summarize. Uh, but, but when you go out there, you speak to your colleagues so that you come more. So the responsibility uh, of managers like you uh, in ensuring that this movement grows and benefits Ugandans is perhaps one of the biggest, uh, the biggest thing. At the Bankers Association, our members are committed to working with uh, cooperatives and circles because it's the way in which we can spur transformation in the economy. Because we reach up to a certain extent, there is a depth of retail beyond which you can't go, right? But we can empower you through uh, resources, through technology, uh, through uh, literacy programs, uh, through uh, you know, building on the partnerships that we already have with development partners, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because in the end, when you win, we win. Financial institutions win as a whole because the money that comes into the formal system increases, right? And so you have a very, very big uh, role to play in that partnership. 
So I will now, as I wrap up, just speak to those uh, three or four key messages. One is confidence building. You have a responsibility, all of you, to build confidence about cooperatives, to raise the image uh, of cooperatives. And the ways to do this is very simple. Good governance, that's the first. Because you know, cooperative uh, and ownership is a very interesting scenario. For me, I remember in my town, whoever was involved with the, co with, 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 uh, the cooperative was powerful. You know, they were like entrepreneurs, actually. Uh, the general managers, in my view, were the owners as a small boy, right? Uh, they were the ones driving the Peugeot 504s. Remember those cars, right? Uh, you even had them in Kenya. They were, yeah, because they're always brand new. Brand new, they bought them from Afro Motors, and I think they'll change them every two or three years. Some of these words you may not even recall, right? Uh, but things were not secondhand. And so when you, saw, you see a, a cooperative manager from top to bottom, they were wearing Italian shoes, right? Uh, the, clothes clearly from a, a, a British shop, right? A brand new French car, right? Very well to do people. And so, and that's okay if the governance is, is right because everybody will be happy. But if the governance is not, then you will have a challenge in building the image. So accountability, building capacity, it's not enough for you to be in charge of a cooperative or a circle. You must build capacity of the circle, you know, or the cooperative. You know, reinvesting in people, in systems. As you are seeing here, uh, CIC going through transformation, hiring new people. They cost a bit more, more money, I would imagine, right? Uh, flying the group CEO here, flying the group uh, chairman, right? Uh, the chairman for Africa, many, many roles, the sorts of people you, he deals with, you've had, they're in meetings, he would have been there, but he's here the whole day. So building that capacity is absolutely crucial for us doing the circles. Most importantly, keep good financial records. Now, I see you have a uh, very chairman is a CPA, right? Uh, look at the, the, the board. You have seen the board, right? Derek. For instance, he's the one who regulates the accountants in Uganda, right? So keep records. That's one of the, 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 the best things that you can do, right? Then focus on innovation. Uh, the past is good, but the future is better because the future is not yet even created, right? And the future is about solutions which we must think about uh, today. Uh, solutions that will lower cost, right? Uh, that to drive additional value, uh, for your respective members. We look at the services. Look across the border. We have the opportunity now with CIC to understand a bit more how cooperatives are working uh, in other parts uh, of the region, right? So I think taking and using that opportunity uh, would be very, very good. Invest in technology. Uh, it doesn't have to be the highest value technology, but start somewhere. And because we're in insurance, Literacy is so crucial that I think at CIC one of the things we need to do is use the members, the owners, the shareholders to spread the word about insurance uh, and the value of insurance to the community. Uh, I see this particular uh, institution is one of the biggest players in uh, agricultural insurance. Uh, at DFC, I'll tell you that agriculture is very crucial to us because of our largest shareholders, Rabobank, being the largest uh, uh, bank for Agriculture uh, in Europe, right? And so we do play quite significantly uh, in the agricultural space, but see the value of agricultural insurance. And CIC is one of the greatest players uh, in this space. But you must go out there and sensitize the public about the opportunity uh, for, for taking up uh, insurance, right? Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, in addition to that, it will be useful for all of you to be part of the financial inclusion agenda and movement. Because it's not just enough to grow your cooperative, but what is crucial to us and the Bankers Association, and we can also uh, partner uh, at that level, is how to build collaborations to be able to see that we include more people uh, into 
as the president says, the money economy. Because like the picture I painted for you earlier, growing up in that little town, the thing that made it um, b exciting is money in the pockets, right? And that is as a result of cooperatives, right? And cooperators, you, you, you see what I mean? And so if financial inclusion, if you are involved very actively in the financial inclusion uh, agenda, it opens doors for further partnerships with other players. And then alignment with government. I encourage all of you to align with government because you cannot succeed as cooperators if you don't align with government and look out for government programs. Because government programs about uh, economic transformation can only be implemented through you, especially now when you see initiatives like the parish development model, which is about bringing services down to the parish. And that's where you are, right? So you must embrace these, these programs, uh, work with your uh, local government uh, leaders. Let them know what you want. Because when your local government knows, it also wants to succeed so it can collect more revenue. So it can, it's better for everybody. Are we together, people? So I encourage you to embrace government programs uh, as, uh, as, as, as cooperators, right? And then ensure regulatory compliance. You see, one of the easiest ways out of business is to forget about compliance. So the very basic things, health and safety, how you look after your people, labor laws, uh, you know, um, what the leaders at the Cooperative Alliance are saying at the level of the ministry, local government, uh, etc. If compliance is done well, it is your license to operate, right? And if you get that right, then you will grow. Let me stop here at the risk uh, of uh, the food going cold. I want to thank uh, you very much, uh, uh, Chairman uh, Ivan, for having uh, uh, had me at the meeting. I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Nelson. Uh, Eric, I want to thank you. Uh, group CEO, thank you very much. Let me also uh, thank my brother Francis uh, for having reached out as well. And finally, I just wanted to clarify about the lapel, right? Uh, and uh, Chairman, I don't want to take any credit, uh, Ivan. Uh, I, I am not a Rotarian. The Rotarians always remind me because I was a Rotarian but took leave uh, for matters of classification. Uh, it was supposed to last six months, but it got complicated uh, because the classification became very hectic thereafter. But the lapel uh, is a, it's a coaching lapel uh, because I'm a professional certified coach from the International Coaching Federation. So that's what the lapel is about. So thank you all very much and wish you a great day. Enjoy the lunch. Thank you. Thank you so much, our chief guest and senior banker. Members, have we seen that we have other senior cooperators? He understands the cooperative movement. Thanks so much. Thank you. We really appreciate you. And he has already whispered to me, that's why I was seated so close to him, that as banks, they are going to see how to support CIC and also the cooperative movement. He's very, he became so supportive then, and even when he left, his success has been very supportive. We are going to sign an MOU beginning of next month to see how the Housing Finance Bank continues to support cooperatives. So we are happy because this was your night when I was sitting next to him sipping a bit of wine. Somebody asked him to count the votes, he refused. Uh, thank you very much for being very patriotic to the cooperative movement. At position two, again, is Chamuhunga People's Cooperative Society. Do we have a representative here? Thank you. Please come along. Thank you very much, Chamuhunga. Chamuhunga has been with us for quite some time now, and there's still every, there's still every hope that uh, we are going to continue being together 
and in fact even increase the share holding levels at position two still is a Uganda Banker Sako. Uganda Banker Sako. Are we here? We are not here. I will ask our very good friend, the Honorable Matthias Katamba. Oh, we hand to Francis. Uh, well, well said. So, Chairman Francis, we'd love to come forward and receive the, that on their behalf. Thank you very much. They've also been with us for quite some time now. The winner in this in this area, and I'm, I'm I'm very proud I'm very proud to call them the winner, is because this year they seem to have decided that they are not going to sleep anymore. They already shareholders with us, and then they woke up and said, "We are going to inject another very big amount of money in February," and this is the Franciscan Investment Cooperative Sacco Limited. The FIC chairman is here with us today. I would also want our director Nkaja, I can see his big beckon, to join them. Uh, knowing how that partnership has worked, thank you very much, Franciscan Sako. Uh, we are very proud to have you as shareholders uh, for this occasion. Thank you very much. This, this final one is uh, going to bring that as well. Yes, yeah, if you come. Bring that, if you need it, uh, the, the, the stand, okay. This final one is when you have a good, a good guest, you thank them heartily. And we are trying to be a very clean company. We don't want to do money stuff. We just want to appreciate you for what you're doing for us. I will ask the group CEO as well to join in this one. We want to appreciate the chief guests, uh, Mr. Matthias Katamba, uh, for coming and talking to us graciously, very beautifully, and giving us insights that are very important. And not just that, I think we sealed a deal uh, in the lift as we were coming up here. He was already saying, Eric, come, let's talk business. And I think that's a very important thing for me. Thank you very much uh, for coming and uh, being agreeing to be part of this journey. Thank you. I will now take the final five, three minutes. Yeah, we, we, we are done with that session. Thank you very much. You, you may retain your seats. Uh, the final two or three minutes to, from the bottom of my heart, uh, thank everyone who has come to help us do this today. We will keep improving. We have listened to you. The areas that we need to improve on, we will definitely improve. You have first the commitments coming straight from the group. You have first the commitments coming from me as the managing director. My staff are equally committed on this. We promise you that when you come back here again, we won't come with lamentations. We will come to show you how far we have come with this journey, and it will be a positive journey. We trust that when this AGM comes up again, you will again be gladly coming in your numbers. Today's attendance is much bigger than last year's attendance and it shows a very, very good indication that the support is beginning to grow. Thank you so very much on behalf of the staff of CIC Insurance uh, Uganda Limited and welcome back again. Safiri Salama, travel safe for those who are traveling. Thank you very much and a big round of applause to all of us. I know we're falling short of time. I apologize on, on that as the master ceremony. But we intend to now finalize. Ladies and gentlemen, what is left on our agenda one is we're going to have an official closing. And the chairman has already granted that. So we have the anthems as it's guided. And uh, that will be in this order. We have the cooperative's anthem, the West African anthem, and the last one is the Uganda. Anthem. And thereafter, we have a photo session. And uh, the photo session, the officials are going to be four. Uh, those are still in motion. We have one, the board of directors, or the board members here. Then we have the board members and. So the next uh, photo moment.
to be for the board members, they will remain here and some corporate I would want to be part of the session. Then we have CIC, Uganda management and staff for a photo session. And then, ladies and gentlemen, today is a day for very good things to be announced. We have one of our producers, Jackie Rose Nakula, who is going this afternoon to be recognized by the industry in the Industry Agents Award by the regulator himself at uh, Ms. T. She is among the winning or the top producers in the industry for the year 2021. So she's also here. She'll have a photo moment with a group CEO and any other person that will please. Ladies and gentlemen, all rise for the nation, sorry for the cooperative anthem. Certainly, it can't be led by <laughs> In the interest yes. of time, we shall take one verse on each. We cooperate and stand a slogan for each of us all, for each one, one in the many and many in one. We promote hope and immortality. Cooperatives be more conscious of your duty to develop are men and women of the nation who might not web if uncooperative. Africa Mashariki Amani Tutimize na marengo yetu Jumuia yetu sote tulinde Tuwajipige, tulimarike Umoja we, tuinguza yetu Yitu mujumuia yetu O yuga May God the will a future in thy hand. You free for me, but together we'll always. Thank you so much. Uh, so the business of the day is done. Francis, please come and take charge of the photo session. Come on, man, like I... Oh, closing prayer, apologies. The uh, way Eric walked here, our uh, MD thought he was going to lead us in prayer. But Winnie has accepted to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you. Let us all humble ourselves. Father Lord, I would like to thank you for this day. Thank you for gathering us here today, cooperators, directors, staff members of CIC and well-wishers. I thank you for the vision that our leadership has for this company. Lord, as we go back to our respective homes, respective units, and respective business operations, I pray that we keep this spirit in mind, that you continue to guide us as we continue to grow CIC, and as we continue to work with the cooperative movement. I thank you, Lord, for your blessings, for your mercies, for keeping us well and alive, for keeping our friends, our families, our employees, and our employers. I thank you, Lord, for continuing to love us and continuing to sustain us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I request the directors, uh, Francis, down or? Right, the directors. So ladies and gentlemen, lunch is going to be served at the restaurant right after this. We pass the registration station table, you will be given coupons, and then we will head down for lunch. Uh, but we need to have uh, these photos, so we are still around. A link is going to be shared with all these photos to all that registered. We want to continue thanking you so much.